Come on. Oh, boy. I can't get the rod out the rod holder. Look at him go. Oh, crap. Oh, my gosh. This is a big fish. Big fish. I can't get the rod out the rod holder, y'all. Oh, my gosh. This is a big one. Hi, y'all. Good morning. I am on a road trip today down to Chickamauga Reservoir. We're going to go after some catfish today, y'all. So what do you say, me and you, try to get us a few. I'm going to get the camera in the chest here first thing, and we're going to get baited up and get after it, man. What we're going to do, well, let me get these baits on here, and I'll explain to you where we're at and what we're going to be doing today. I want to get these baits down as quick as possible. I'm getting a little bit later start than I would have liked to. It's about 8 o'clock right now. And I'm down here getting ready for a tournament. I gotta, I'm filming this on a Monday. And this coming Saturday, I got a tournament down here. Catfish tournament. And so I need to get a game plan together. I need to figure out what I want to do on tournament day, where I want to go. And so, kind of, kind of had hoped to have already been down here at some point in the last couple weeks, just to mess around and see what's going on. But Mother Nature, life, things get in the way. So we we getting after them today, though, folks. But anyway, let me show you a rig here first. I didn't even show you the other one. The other one was a skipjack head on a dragging rig. This one here is a skipjack chunk on a dragging rig. I've got a sinker here these sinkers i make them there's a link down in the video description if you want to learn how that goes on a three-way to an 80 pound monofilament leader i've got a float rattle 10 ounce size circle hook and a few inches behind that i've got a catfish sumo bait stalker fly so this other rig exact same setup just with a skipjack head now i'm going to be running another rod and on this other rod i'm going to be suspending a bait just fishing it vertical right under the kayak and we're going to try something out here today um, this is going to be a little bit different setup for me so we're going to put a, a skipjack head on our suspending rig so right now we're going two heads and a chunk of skipjack to start with let's flip that bail over there on that one so my suspend fishing rig the the rig itself is same it, it's a eight ounce egg sinker down to a 10 ounce, 10 ounce size circle hook and a catfish sumo bait stalker fly under but here's what's going to be a little bit different today and this may not work out we may end up switching this back around so normally if i'm going to drag baits and suspend baits at the same time i will drag off the back of the kayak and suspend off the front and we're going to reverse that today at least to start with and see see if we like it or not i don't know if we will um we're going to be dragging off the front and suspending that one bait off the back and, and here here's my thinking on this as to why sometimes when you're dragging along, you're, you're dragging baits here on, your sinker's going across the bottom, your bait's floating up behind it there, a couple feet off the bottom. This will flip that bail over and get to pulling. Uh, but what oftentimes will happen is, you'll be pulling along and your sinker will catch in something. You'll come across some brush or wood debris down there and your rig will get snagged. And what oftentimes happens is if you got your rods behind you and you're not looking at them, you'll your rod tip will be fully loaded up. Like you'll be in that snag. And at that point, it's hard to get it loose. You got to turn around, go back and get it. Well, if you, in, in times like that, if you see your rod tip, like if you see your rig start to catch and your rod tip starting to load up, what I have found is if you will instantly just give it some slack and then raise straight up on the rod tip you can pull through that snag oftentimes like you'll oftentimes just pull right up and over it if you got your rods in front of you you're looking at them you can see that happen here goes this ski boater right away y'all again i'm filming this on a monday i've already seen five bass boats one about run me over i think he was doing it intentionally just to be a jerk and now ski boat man busy morning out here chickamauga 
busy, busy pleasure boat and bass boat body of water. Anyway, when your rods are in front of you and you're dragging, you can see that and oftentimes prevent yourself from kind of getting down in them snags and having to go back and get them. So it saves you time. So that's kind of why I want to do this setup. But when you're suspending baits and you're trolling, like today, there's no current out here this morning. So like we're going to be on the move. We're going to be actively moving out here this morning. So when you're doing that and you're fishing vertically, you've got to kind of adjust for the depth changes. You're constantly raising, lowering your baits to keep them. Oh, I, I typically like my suspended baits about three foot off the bottom. So that's easier to do when your rods are in front of you, you know, so we're going to try this off the back. And the other thing too, and I've, I've turned my rod holder around so it's facing directly off the back for this uh, suspend rig. Because if we say we hook a fish over here on the dragging rig, we're reeling it in. I don't want him getting caught in this line. And so if my rod's angled out more this way, it's more likely to happen. And boy, there goes another one over there, man. Busy morning out here, but <laughs> we're gonna be rocked with boat wake. Another reason for wanting to drag today, by gosh, because with all this rocking up and down, it's gonna probably make it hard to catch a fish on suspended rig. But we out here though, man, we gotta get ready for this tournament. As much boat traffic as there is already this morning, just wait till Saturday, man. There'll be bass boats at every one of these launch sites having tournaments, man. It'll be, it's gonna be busy. I'll, I gotta get my glasses on. That sun is bright this morning. There ain't a cloud in the sky. I wonder what y'all are. Yeah, y'all gonna be looking right into that sun with this camera in my chest here today, y'all. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring y'all with me today unedited. Raw and uncut, you're gonna see me out here just kinda figuring things out, trying to get a pattern together, trying to get an idea of what I wanna do on a tournament. And I wanna just bring you all with me and just show you every step of the way here for this morning session. My, my plan is this morning to work a river bend. The, I launched down river from here and I've come up and the way the river runs, I'll try to pan around so you can see that you may not be able to see that boat coming around the bend, but this makes a just basically a horseshoe type curve around here. There are some islands right up here. And what we're going to do, we're going to work the outside bend basically all the way around through here. I just want to cover a big stretch of this main channel ledge around this bend in front of these islands over here. Water depth through here. Right now we're 29 feet. It's going to be, I think, down to about 40 feet at the max. So relatively shallower area compared to some of them. It's not going, we're not going to have any like 70, 80 foot holes uh, through this stretch like you do on some sections here of this reservoir. But uh, last year I had a tournament down here. Here, I'm going to put y'all on the chest. Y'all don't want to look at my face the whole time. Let me put y'all on the chest so you can see these rods go down if we get bit. The spoiler alert, if you're seeing this, we got bit. <laughs> so I ain't going to, I ain't going to post no. It's, it can be informative if you have a bad day fishing. You can, it, that can help you as far as getting ready for a tournament because at least you know not to go there or not to do what you were doing um on that particular day you're not going to want to do it in a tournament obviously right but um, i'm not going to show that on video especially a video that might be three to four hours long i mean nobody wants to see that crap so if you're seeing this by gosh something went right for us this morning we got on some fish but um last year we had a tournament here on chickamauga and it was around the same time of year. It was in April. And I fished the tournament from these islands up here. The day of the tournament, there were some high winds in the forecast. And our kayak catfishing tournaments allow us to fish off the bank so long as we access the bank spot from our kayaks. And so from a strategic standpoint, I decided to fish off the bank that day because I knew when the wind got going, it got real bad, I wouldn't be affected by it. Whereas the other guys who were actually out in their kayaks, when the wind kicked up on them, 
they were going to have a hard time doing whatever it was before the wind kicked up. So I, I wasn't going to be affected was my thought process. And I had a pretty good day. Uh, I made a stupid mistake in that tournament and had a fish get disqualified because I forgot to have, I took the picture of the fish on the measuring board, had my identifier in place. I did everything right with the picture, but I didn't have my kayak in the picture. I, I had found a level area on the ground and put the fish on the board there and took the picture. It didn't have the kayak in the picture. So I had a fish, my biggest fish that I caught got disqualified. And that cost me, it cost me some money. Uh, it cost me quite a bit of money because I, that knocked me from second place down to third place. But I caught the fish I needed to cash in that tournament. So I said, you know what, this is going to be my first practice day down here. I'm going to come back to the same area because in theory, same time of year, uh, similar water temps, yada, yada, yada. There should be some more fish in this area. So, and there ain't never a bad, let's be real. There ain't never a bad time to fish a river bend, an outside river bend. You've got a creek that comes up in, uh, between a couple of these islands up here too. You probably can't, I can't see it. Right? I know you all can't see it either because the damn glare of the sun right now. Uh, but uh, there is a creek that comes up in here. So when you've got a creek moving in to an outside river bed, man, those places are, you got a chance at catching some fish there year round, seven days a week, 365. So we're going to start here. I'm going to do a morning session here, fish this area three, four hours, you know, right now we're moving about 0.4, probably bump that up to like 0.5 maybe, but we go 0.4, 0.5 miles an hour for three to four hours. We're going to cover mile and a half, two miles stretch here of this ledge, unless we just really get on them and then I'll maybe hit the spot lock or something and we'll sit there on them. But I want to see that, uh, see what's going on here this morning. And then I may mix things up. There's a, another ledge downstream of where I launched. I may make a run down there before I go home today. Kind of want to make the most of my time out here this morning because it's such a, a, a long drive. It's about an hour and 15 minutes each way for me to get here. So, uh, you know, you drive that far from home, you definitely want to try to get the maximum amount of fishing time you can. But I definitely, we're going to hit this area first. Now tomorrow, I'm coming back to Chickamauga. I'm, I'm driving home today, but I'm going to drive back down in the morning. And I may fish with Ryan Bortz tomorrow, possibly. Um, we'll see. Uh, he's come down here. I think he got in sometime in the middle of the night last night and he had said that he was going to go to watts bar dam this morning and try to get some skipjack and then he was going to uh, do some cat he's going to be catfishing down here all week he's come down for a full week before the tournament so i think me and him will probably try to hook up somewhere to sir was right there splashing us fish trying to get a cameo on this video right here you tell them fish, buddy, if they want to get on this video, they're going to need to bite a hook. But uh, you may see if Ryan and I fish together tomorrow, and if I manage to catch some fish, y'all may possibly see that in an upcoming video. No promises, though. Me catching fish lately has been, um, it's been a pipe dream, really, because <laughs> I just ain't been doing no good catfishing lately, man. I don't know why. I just ain't been, for whatever, nothing I've done, I've been, I've been fishing back home, Fort Loudon and Watts Bar. But what I've been doing just ain't been getting it done. But we well, on Chickamauga today, we're going to put some time in down here. A little bit different scenery change our mojo a little bit and hopefully catch us some fish and maybe get a plan together i don't you know coming out here today it's not like i'm 
I'm, ba I'm basically just wanting to try to figure out, like, trying to get a pattern together. Like, if we catch fish here today, let's say we're on a, we got something happening right here, don't we? I think that's a fish trying to nip at that thing right there. You tell that fish to, he's either going to eat that bait or he's going to leave it the heck alone. We ain't letting him chew up no baits today. Yeah, he's, he's, he's heated our advice. He's going to let it go. But, you know, if we get out here today, let's say we catch some fish, but maybe we don't, maybe we don't get the quality that we want. Well, we can still learn a lot from that. We can learn depth. I think I might be a little, nope. Gummit. I don't know if I was getting snagged on something or if that was a fish on that one. I'm inclined to think maybe it was a fish because it, we were getting nipped at there before. But uh, you can learn a lot, even if you don't necessarily get the results as far as quality that you want. You can still learn a lot just by putting together some stuff maybe it's the depth maybe it's a speed we're moving uh maybe a specific cut of bait you know you can apply that to your next trip and then over the course of a few sessions you can i think that one there's the snag i think yep pull up and over that but over the course of a a few sessions you can dial in a pattern so that when you show up on tournament day you're doing what you need to be doing to get bit. And so that's what I really want to do these next two days. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fish any more this week than just today and tomorrow. I mean, I'm going to I'll try to fish, but I don't know that I can fish down here. I got to be home for a package delivery either Wednesday or Thursday because I'm forced to sign for it directly. Heaven forbid FedEx lets you sign online and just leave the damn thing. UPS will let you do that. FedEx does not. So I'm going to have to be home for that. And then Friday, I want to make a bait run so that I've got the freshest bait possible for tournament day on Saturday. And then uh, Friday night, and you'll probably this video will probably come out before then, so I'll go ahead and let you know. But Friday night, April 19th, uh, 2024 if you're seeing this a year from now but um that's that's a fish right there that's a fish we're hooked up fish number one how long we've we been moving here what's that 17 minutes on the camera so here comes a bass boat too i hope he watches me reel in this fish because he may not reel in a fish all day i'm still upset about that other bass fisherman zooming right by me i mean he got within 10 feet of me and then he wouldn't even look at me as he went by so i know he was being a jerk this one here ain't being a jerk he's giving us some space but i'm i'm lumping all them bass fishermen in together today they some big bass down here on chickamauga and so it's a this is a bass fishing destination spot. So there's always bass fishermen down here. All right, folks, fish number one here is a blue cat. And he is hooked up under the chin. Come here, fish. Don't throw that bait off, it's still in good shape. I wanna reuse that thing, fish. You know what? We're gonna bring you in just like this. Because I don't want to wear that hook and you've got it under the chin right there. I don't even know how you done that fish. You was probably trying to come up and just nip at that bait instead of actually eating the bait, and this is what you get. That serves you right, fish. Got that stinger on top of the head too, didn't you? 
you ain't front camera worthy fish and i ain't even got my front camera mount set up so i'm gonna hold you out like that that's a larger dink right there let's check their bait and just make sure it's hooked okay and get it back out there it's a good sign though y'all fish number one just a few minutes into the trip on a chunk let me show you how these rigs run if you're new to my channel or new to dragging so you see i've got my dragging sinker there it goes down on bottom your float keeps your bait and that fly up off the bottom trailing behind it and so as your sinker's moving along the mud bottom it's kind of kicking up some mud down there creating a little debris trail dust trail and then here comes your bait behind it and so any fish that are kind of drawn to the disturbance oh that's a, that's a better one right there that's a better one right there that's a better takedown right there but any fish that are kind of drawn to that disturbance they've got them an easy meal with that piece of cut bait oh no he just come free he just popped free baits look good i don't know i don't know what went wrong with that let's fix our i mean innards and everything still good on that man that felt like a that felt like a little better fish right there too on that one well let's let these lines back out here you see we're 29 feet and we're just working on the edge of this ledge here we're gonna have to get repositioned here it looks like but you see over here in the shallows that's a flat over here and that island's right up there basically just part of that island there that just kind of submerged real shallow drops off here at about 29 feet and then over here, kind of just a gradual decline from 29 out here in the middle of the channel, about 38 feet. So very gradual decline. But what we want to do is we want to work this edge right here where this steep drop comes down. We want to be on the bottom edge of this ledge as we work our way around. And that's what we're going to follow all the way up through here is that we're going to work that contour all the way around this bend. That's two fit, man. We went through some fish because we got that one that we landed and the bigger one there that we didn't. That's very encouraging. Very encouraging. Getting bit that quickly. Let out some line here as we keep moving along. I've got my cruise control thing set on my motor up there, so... It's gonna keep us moving at about a half a mile an hour. As we're reeling in fish, we get slowed down. It'll compensate speed to try to keep us in that. So our other baits will keep moving as we make our way along. So anyway, I was saying though, before them fish interrupted me, Friday night at Catfish Sumo headquarters, we've gonna have our tournament pre-tournament meetup check-in there what goes on at these check-ins is our tournament director kayak mike he will look at our measuring boards make sure that they are meeting all the specifications required for the tournament and sign off on those boards we'll also get our tournament identifiers which is a unique identifier that we take our pictures with uh, of the fish because our, our kayak catfishing tournaments go by length not weight so they're going to score we take a picture of these fish on the measuring board with our identifier and a date time gps stamp and those fish then get submitted to a live leaderboard that's how these tournaments work so friday night before the tournament we go through the board check and get our identifiers and all that and so with this tournament being on Chickamauga, which is fairly close to Catfish Sumo's headquarters, and Catfish Sumo is one of the sponsors of this tournament trail, they're having that checkup or check-in meetup event there at Catfish Sumo. And so Daniel is opening it up, though, to everybody. 
uh, not just tournament competitors, but general public too. So if you want to come out, and you should be seeing this video before Friday night, if you're in the Chattanooga area or reasonable drive, come on out. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be there. I'm going to bring Daphne the dog down too, so she'll be there. Uh, but we'll be there from 6 to 8. Uh, Daniel, the owner of Catfish Sumo, I think he's going to get some pizzas or snacks or something and drinks for everybody uh free you know everything be free i think you'll be probably running some sales in there everything catfish sumo sales will be available for purchase there if you want to try to grab a bargain or just take a look around at the various catfish items so come on out It'll be a fun time a lot of the guys that are that are here that are here all week you know like ryan bortz for instance um they've traveled down here for the tournament they'll have their kayaks and rigs and everything there too so if you're wanting to set up a kayak it'd be a good opportunity to see how other people have got theirs rigged up give you some ideas and maybe what you want to do i won't have my kayak here that night um, since i am since this is a close enough drive for me to drive down on tournament morning I'm just going to get some bait around the house there on Friday, then drive down there, have my board checked and do the meetup and all, and then go back home that night. And so I'll just load up the kayak there when I get back home, be ready to go Saturday morning. So I won't have mine with me, but the other guys there will, will have theirs. But regardless, if you're in the area, come on out. Love to meet you. Shake your hand. Thank you for watching the videos, especially these unedited ones. It takes a special kind of person to sit through three to four hours of hearing me flap my gums while we reel in some fish, but you're appreciated. So thanks. I'd probably appreciate you a little more if you'd catch me some bait and help me reel in some fish from time to time when I got two of them on at the same time. Maybe, maybe net a fish for me once in a while. It wouldn't kill you. It's but I can't get much work out of you, that's for sure. <laughs> we got bass fishermen up here on this dang island, man. We ain't gonna have no privacy out here today. Everybody gonna be eavesdropping on us all morning long. I had told Mike, Kayak Mike, our tournament director before, I, I, I told him, I was like, you know, uh, I know you want to hit some spots on the Tennessee River because the Tennessee River is a good place for kayak catfishing tournaments, not just because of the quality of fish here, but also, too, because of the generally stable water flow. I think we got a little snag happening here. Let's give ourselves some slack. We're going to just pick up and try to go over it. And I felt us go in it. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to go back for this, y'all. I felt that one catch solid. I think, we're in some, I think we're in some wood on that. I saw something on the graph a little while ago. Our bait probably just got to, and I bet we got in it. I hope we get our rig back, but... Make a quick turn here and go get it. Let's get our other spin rig up too. I don't know how this is going to work out with this. Suspending this bait behind us here. I've already about got it in the other line. But I had... I had told Mike before, because he wants to do some places on the Tennessee River because of the quality of fish and also too just the fact that you can you can have a kayak tournament out here and as I got my line wrapped in the dang transducer now, you can have a tournament with hopefully as many safety measures in place as possible just because of the lack of current flow the um, it's not a day aside from just the heavy boat traffic 
it's not a dangerous place to fish like rivers with faster flow so it's a good place to have a kayak catfishing tournament but i told him before i was like man of all places chickamauga on a saturday <laughs> i mean is you're literally you have to adjust your tournament strategy for there come our rig right then you have to adjust your strategy of where you're going to go based on the fact that there's going to be so many damn bass boats on the water because let's say you go to a, let's say you go to a popular boat ramp a big boat ramp and you launch and there's a bass tournament going on that's got 200 boats or something the way our tournaments work like we'll be able to launch anybody right there's what we were snagging in see that whatever that is coming off the bottom that's what we were in right in i'm gonna get just above that and then we'll get ourselves i'm gonna hit the course heading i'm gonna hit our cruise control one two three four five knock it down to point five now let's let our lines back it. But uh, as I, boy, I backlash that thing too when I release the spool. We're in bad shape this morning, y'all. Why'd y'all do that? Y'all can't even let some line out. Now we got it hung up in here too. Lord, what have you done? There it goes. I can't take him nowhere. Let's get our suspended rig back down to you. Well, there's some more rough stuff right there. It's another log right there. We'll see if we can pull through it. But if you go to a boat or a boat ramp, there's 200 boats there. And you need to get off the water in a hurry to make it back to check in, and all them boats are coming in to weigh in, you can get held up. And so you kind of got to take that into consideration of where you're gonna go and where you're gonna where you're gonna fish at. You know, if you're if you're trying to any of these guys this weekend, and I'm not gonna do it. But any of these guys this weekend that's trying to fish a backwater creek somewhere just this time of year with all these most of these bass guys they're gonna be in the creeks on saturday man you're just gonna be rocked all day long the boat traffic like it's gonna be hard to suspend fish this weekend that's kind of another reason why i'm wanting to drag out here this morning really focus on this because as much boat traffic as they're going to be on saturday it's going to be hard to suspend baits effectively because you're just going to be bouncing all morning long, all day long on Saturday. Our tournament will run from 7 to 3. And then we'll have to be back to check in by 4. So ideal scenario, you find somewhere that you can catch some fish close to your launch site that is a launch site that's not real busy. That's best case scenario. Don't always work out like that. We're ready to flip this bell over here now. Hopefully we're going to pull through that debris we were seeing on the screen there. It would suck to just get everything put back out and then have to turn around and go back. But personally, I would rather turn around and go back and get a rig than to break off. Oh my God, I'm in it again. Oh, come on. Pull through this, Bessie. Oh, Bessie ain't pulling through. Oh, my God. I'm in with the other one now, too, y'all. We're in bad shape. We may have to suspend through here just because of all the... Okay, that one come free. Well, there's some more. There's some more garbage right there, man. 
in one sense it's good that there is so much debris here on bottom i mean it gives fish cover but boy it's hard to drag through hard to drag through a bunch of wood i don't care what kind of rig you're using man it's hard to go through wood i ain't gonna raise up that suspend rig this time i'm gonna try to leave it down maybe as we turn around y'all tuned in to see a fishing video and you're just gonna watch me fight snags all day <laughs> you know last year i fished this area i come down and i had pre-fished here before the tournament well there was fish right there on the bottom i had pre-fished before the tournament and suspended baits through this area and, and i got a big fish here on this bend and of course tournament day there it comes tournament day i was on that island up there casting baits out from the bank so basically fishing on bottom well there's some there's some bait of some kind some kind of smaller fish right there too maybe we'll slide out here just a little bit because those fish will bit farther out here off that ledge it's just all right there's a there's one of them in there it's a little bit bigger mark too that's interesting i don't know what those are but let's let's just get us some baits down there folks let's try this again see if we can get snagged again But first you don't succeed try and try again but anyway last year i caught that big fish suspending and then i got them fish there off the bank on tournament day but what i didn't do last year was drag any of it so we're gonna try that today hopefully we can drag this area without being constantly snagged. You get that much wood. wood is the challenge of dragging though. It's hard to pull through because you're not only do your sinkers and everything get caught in the wood, but you're, sometimes your hooks will dig in. If you pull through like brush, for instance, maybe if you, if you get your sinker through it as your bait and your hook comes through them branches you get a hook snagged that's usually when you lose a rig but i would much rather go back and get a rig than to break off it just takes so much time to retie doing what i'm doing here going back and getting it is quicker there's another tree or something there on bottom i see the space there under part of it we're going to get hopefully not caught in it too <laughs> we'll know here in a minute when we get to it but these guys pulling planer boards and stuff that's what everybody will be doing down here on tournament day they'll all be that's all them guys do fish tournaments they pull planer boards you get a rig snagged with planer board you do got to just break off because it takes too much time to reel in Oh my gosh, are you serious right now? We're not going to be able to drag through here, y'all. We are not going to be able to drag through here. I'm going to have to just suspend. This one over here is about to get hung, too. And we're going to have to suspend baits through here. There's just too much debris. Okay, I got that now. Well, I brought another rod to suspend with, but that was not what I was hoping to do today. Well, that's frustrating, y'all, but it's a, even though it's quick to go back and get a rig, it's incredibly time consuming if you have to do it 57 times and you can't make any progress.
man, oh man, y'all, that's, there's just so much debris on bottom, I just don't think I can, I don't think we're going to be able to navigate through here with dragging. We're going to have to just suspend baits and run it over, or if we, if there was any flow at all, we could, I'd anchor or spot lock. And we'd just cast baits down. But they're not running in. They're not going to be as little flow as they're running here this week with no rain in the forecast. They may not run any generators at all on Saturday. So it's going to be just flat. It's going to be lake like conditions out here on tournament day. We're going to reel this up. And I'm going to bust out another suspend rig and we're going to, we'll keep an eye on the bottom. As long as we're seeing debris, we'll just keep suspending as we make our way along. If it clears up a little bit, there it comes. If it clears up a little bit here, we'll bust the dragon rigs back out. But right now, I think we're wasting our time trying to drag this area. All right, let's get a set again and we're gonna bust out another suspend rig. Okay. Let's switch these rods out. That up here, that's that suspended skipjack head. And what I'm gonna do, because, oh God almighty, y'all, it's a damn blooper reel out here today. Now I've got my sus dragon rig tied up with my suspending rig when I move this one up front. This is a dang SHIT show this morning. We started out so well getting bit so quickly. Now it's all going it's all going to crap. Alright. I'm just gonna cut us a new bait for this rig here. Get a fresh piece on for it. And then I think when I do that, we get these down. I'm going to try to lose this sweatshirt because it is getting warm out here today. I think it's supposed to be like 80 degrees today. This is our warmest day of the year so far. It's nice too. I'd rather be hot than cold. I'm sick of the cold weather we had this winter, man. It's nice to be into spring now be warming up. I think tournament day we're going to have a little cold front come through. I think high is going to be in the 60s, but at least it'll still be comfortable. All right, let's get this down. We'll just suspend a couple trolling through here till, till the bottom clears up. Oh my God, are you serious? I just dropped it into a damn snag down there when I dropped the bait down on bottom. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> oh, we having a bad time today. Bad time today on them snags. But, it's a lot of cover down there for them fish though. That ought to be some flatheads in all that timber down there. Plenty of skipjacks, they're good and fresh. Got them yesterday. So we're loaded up on bait today. Oh, Still on the bottom there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna raise them up just a little higher off bottom in case one of these pieces of debris we're going over. It's got a branch that wants to come up and grab us. 
I'm gonna lose the sweatshirt right here, y'all. Y'all bear with me a minute. I gotta I'll hold you between the legs there. Well, I'll lose the sweatshirt. See, it is going to warm up quick today. All right. These bass fishermen are going by right now. I've seen a little strip show out here. I better get a dollar bill or two out of them. Of course, with inflation, I don't even know how much you're supposed to. I don't know how much you're supposed to tip a, a dancer now at the gentleman's club. It may have went from ones to fives possibly by now, for all I know. You know what I'm gonna do? This is stupid. This is a dumb idea. We've got our dragon rig here going off the back right now. Let's lower it down just a little bit. Not all the way to bottom. Just a little bit. Let's run it a few feet down. Doo doos and giggles, folks. Doo doos and giggles. Got nothing to lose. All right. see what we can do suspending up through here I'm gonna slow our speed down a little bit because of that because our baits will get pulled up in the water if you, if you troll too quickly with suspended baits can't keep them in the strike zone as easily with the water resistance but see what happens i mean our the one fish we caught and that other bite that we lost both on the dragging the suspend rig hadn't been touched yet so definitely more confident in the dragging technique right now but with what we've been trying to pull through it just don't seem realistic right now We'll keep an eye on that screen though as we move along if it's looking clear for a stretch we'll put a dragging rig back down at least one kind of hurts the boys dreams though because i really think i'm gonna have to drag on tournament day just because of the boat traffic i don't think i'm gonna be able to fish vert even if we get on a bite fishing vertically suspending i don't know that i'm going to be able to replicate that on saturday with the water bouncing up and down from the boat wake no there he's bass fishing on that island that's where i was set up last year for the tournament right there where he's fishing at right now I had casted baits out to just past where his boat is. I got several fish that day. Blues, I got a flathead. I have to believe, man, with as much. Got a little something happening here. Something's got that bait. He wants it. Thought he's gonna swim off with. I saw my line starting to take off. He thought better of it. This much debris and wood down there, man. There's got to be some flatheads in this area. There's got to be. This stuff's just washed down and settled here. I'd really like to. If you got a day where you got some decent flow on this river bend, I'd like to just start at the top, anchor fish, cast baits out, and just make my way down around the bend, anchor fishing. I could see that being real productive. Just ain't got the flow to do that right now. Feast or famine out here in the spring, man. You either, we've either had a ton of rain and they're blowing it out there to dams, spill gates open, all that. Or 
you got no current at all <laughs> that's where we're at right now no current at all can't have no can't have no in between it don't seem like we'll figure it out though we'll, we'll make do we'll if nothing else we're going to learn today depth for sure if if since there's such a long stretch of this ledge it's consistent in depth we'll figure out if kind of this 30 foot's an ideal place to be right now that'll be one thing we learn for sure too we may figure out like a, a certain cut of the bay last year i done real good on sucker i think most of my fish on tournament day maybe all of them even came on sucker red horse sucker so on Friday, I'm going to definitely take the net out and try to throw and hope to get lucky. Kind of have to get lucky with Red Horse Sucker. I don't have a way to target them. I do have some frozen ones in my freezer that I'll probably bring down on tournament day. But um, that, would be, I, that would be nice if I could get some of those. But otherwise, I can definitely get skipjack right now. I'm gonna load up there on Friday, make sure I got plenty of bait, fresh bait. But if we can figure out a pattern as far as what cut or, or can't really experiment with types of baits today because I've only got skipjack with me. But any little piece of the puzzle we can get is gonna be a big help on tournament day. Everybody in the tournament's going to be dragging baits, pulling planer boards, and using skipjack. Every one of them. I promise you. I wish this guy up here on the bass boat would go on. Y'all know I don't like talking around people and camera and stuff. I'm weird about it. Most bass fishermen don't fish a spot that long. They make about five casts and they motor down to the next place. This in here, he's the most thorough bass fisherman of all time. I ain't seen him catch a damn thing, though. I don't even know what he's doing. He's got his boat spun around all cattywampus here. I don't know if he knows what he's doing. He ain't caught a damn thing. We'd have seen it if he did. I ain't seen much on bottom here in a little while, y'all. You, you think we want to drop another dragon rig down? We may regret it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one behind us here. I'm going to run it down there on bottom. We'll just suspend a couple here off the front right now and drag one on bottom if it pulls a little ways and does okay we'll drop the other one down what's this guy doing over here is he washing his damn boat looks like he's scrubbing the back of it he's wiping it down i'm dumber for watching this Uh, I, I've my IQ dropped 30 points watching this. Oh, look at this! Holy cow! Is a fish got this thing? Well, he does. He does, man. I was dropping that dragging rig down, and my line started shooting off. A fish grabbed it as I was letting that line. That's interesting. That bait would have been set and steel down there. I was letting out line it would have just hit bottom and I was putting some distance but man all right y'all another one on the dragging rig but it was setting still well this is a nice turn of events there's something right over there I wonder if that was skipjack jumping right there <laughs> all right y'all fish number two if we can get it landed 
he pulled off a bunch of extra line right there while I was, I just heard it peeling off my reel. Yeah, this one here is better than the last one. It's blue. You know what? Let's just, let's spot lock right here a second. That fish hit that bait setting still. I mean, I was moving, but the bait was still letting that line, so it was setting on bottom. Let's just spot lock here a second while we land him, see what happens with our other baits. Yeah, this one here is definitely better than the last one. This is a nice fish. Oh man, he's ate that bait deep too. He's ate it deep because I, he, he was able to get that thing down before I even knew he was on. Find the glove here. Hopefully we can. Hopefully we can get this hook out on this fish. That's a nice one here. He ain't ready to come in yet, is he? Oh, he just popped free then. We got the quick release on him. Just like that, he's gone. I'm glad that happened today and not on tournament day. At least we got the hook back though. I saw how deep he had it. I was worried he wasn't gonna, I was worried he might be gut hooked or something. Okay. Well, y'all didn't even have to get your hands dirty on that one. How awesome was that? It would suck on tournament day. Man, oh man, that fish was just, we were setting still. That's interesting. I'm thinking a second, y'all bear with me. We saw that wood down there. There's fish on it, apparently. Let's do this. Since we got bass fishermen over here up our ass, cause he's the most thorough bass fisherman of all time. Let's run right back down here about 50 yards. We'll spot lock, we'll suspend baits. I'll throw out these dragon rigs behind us and we'll just sit there a minute. Because now, I mean, our second bite, the biggest fish of the morning, ate a bait that was just setting still. Oh, well now that bass fisherman's gonna go on. Of course he is. Y'all, we got some bad Judy on us today or something. We might be figuring out something here. If we get bit again, setting still, we might be on to something. Okay, I'm, I guess I could be showing y'all the screen over here as we go down through here. I'm just gonna go down. There's another fish right there. There's some, there's some bait. All right. Yeah, we're just, there goes another one. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, y'all. We got, so we got our suspending baits here. As the kayak settles, they'll get back down vertical under us. I'm gonna see which way the kayak spins around here with not having any current. And there's really no wind out here this morning either. It's who knows where it's going to settle but wherever it settles we'll throw at least one maybe two of these rigs that are set up for dragging we'll throw them off the back and let them just sit there on bottom a minute and just see what happens because i mean look at here there's some fish down there let's do that i'm gonna let me get us another bait cut the other one that was awesome though i just I heard my line just start peeling off. It was that dang fish had come up and ate that thing. <laughs> Y'all, it's a daggone cluster out here this morning. Y'all, here you did, you watch my edited videos and you just see me reeling in fish and you think I know what the hell I'm doing and clearly I don't. Because I've been snagged 
I've been snagged 47 times today already. We've spent about as much time with baits out of water as we've had with baits in water. And the biggest fish I, I catch today, I catch him on a dragon rig that ain't even dragging, and then I lose him at the side of the kayak. So I'm, I've got some incompetence going on right now. But we're gonna get it together, y'all. <laughs> it's better to better to get you mess ups out of the way on a pre-fishing day than it is on a tournament day. I think the kayak is the very faint breeze I feel is coming from this way. So I think the motor will eventually kind of turn us into this way and then we're gonna, I'll give this bait just a short toss behind us and we'll just sit here a few minutes. Give it like 10, 15 minutes just sitting here and see what happens. And if the kayak position stays kind of consistent, then we'll cast that other one out. What I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is cast both of these dragon rigs out to be sitting on bottom and the kayak gets spun every which way and then end up with these lines wrapped around each other and tangled up and stuff, so. Okay, we got that one out. Got the other two suspended. That other dragon rig on this side, we'd actually lower down part of the way. So, what a cluster this morning, y'all. Here I did, I thought, I'm just gonna just drag my way around. We'll just cover about a mile and a half, two miles of this and 47 snags later and uh, just a, maybe a lucky catch there later. We, we're completely mixing up the game, so. You know, this is what we do, man. This is what we do. We just gotta, we gotta play the hand we're dealt. That was a pretty good fish though. It looked like he had ate that bait deep. Look right here. Look right here, man. We're already getting hit on that rod. Something was after it, buddy. Let's go ahead and cast this other one out. Maybe they want a bait set and steal this morning. Well, I'm glad we didn't. My fly is all around my rig on that one. These flies on the dragon rig is an ongoing experiment that may not last much longer. We'll talk about that in a minute. Guess that one over there. Interesting, y'all, oh, very interesting. Adjust my rod over here. You know, every day is different. Sometimes fish want a bait that's moving, sometimes they don't. Sometimes having baits suspended is the ticket, sometimes dragging's the ticket, sometimes on bottom's the ticket. Never know, day by day, you just gotta be willing to adapt. Most of the time I go out, a normal trip back home when I go out, like I've got a plan. Like that's what I'm doing that day. But coming down here, when I'm on a road trip somewhere, especially if I'm like today, I'm getting ready for a tournament. Everything's on the table. Like I'm not, I'm not tunnel vision. I'm not locked into a certain thing. Like everything, everything's on the table. Cause come tournament day, got one hitting. Got him. 
Maybe being anchored is the key. You know, come tournament day, you gotta do what you gotta do to catch fish, and it may not be what you wanna do. It may not be where you wanna be. Y'all know my favorite way to catch fish is with suspended baits. I love just pulling up on the creek mouth or a point, and sitting there four or five hours waiting on fish to work through. Well, if that ain't the best bite or the best method on tournament day, you, you hurting yourself. You know, so if I'm fishing at home and I'm a reasonable drive from home, I don't mind going out and maybe catching less fish on that day or maybe getting skunked on that day. It is what it is, but when you're on a road trip or in tournament, you gotta do what you gotta do. And so we're doing what we gotta do out here today and don't get my line all twisted up here, fish, right before I land you. Here, come in here before you, before you get everything all twisted up. That's another one though. We got hit pretty much as soon as that bait went down. And now there's another one, smaller blue. But he's on the bait there that's cast out nothing on the suspended yet oh we gotta fix that bait i'm gonna cast this back out i think they've knocked the gut pocket out you know what let's not let's just switch that out let's switch it out we might as well put a fresh piece on Got plenty of skipjack, no reason to be conservative today. I wanna, if this is the bite, then I wanna know, I wanna know for sure. It's just, boy, it's gonna make it hard, man. If they're wanting a, if they're wanting baits cast out sitting on bottom, and we've got no flow on tournament day, and we've got bass boats galore on tournament day and what it, here's the other wild card the wind is barely moving that here this morning man it's i mean barely noticeable if anything if you get the wind kind of gusting and you've got no flow maybe it's maybe you're in the air even especially if it's like swirling your kayak's going to be spun around every which way whether you anchor it or spot locked or whatever like it's gonna be hard to have baits positioned where they need to be on bottom. We'll find a way though. If this is what we need to do on tournament day, we'll make it work. Hell, if I gotta go over there and pull up on the bank on that island again, if that's what it takes, and I'll do it two years in a row by gosh. So last year I had the fish to get second place, just made a stupid mistake and had that one fish get disqualified. So that knocked me, knocked me down to third place. There's fish in that wood debris down there though, man. There's fish in it. Let's just sit here. Let's give it another 10, 15 minutes. Just see what happens. All right, here's one. It's practically under us. I don't know if that's a cat or something else, but he's right there. About 25 feet deep and 29 feet of water right now. This here, y'all, this is a... It's going to be in our way today when I try to film that screen, but it's a jimmy rig mount I've made. I uh, recently, and I talked about this on an ultralight trip I, I filmed uh, a couple days ago, but I bought a long crappie rod recently, like one that's about a half mile long. <laughs> and and this thing, I mean, I'd never used a rod that long before, but it's got a purpose. 
when I'm live scoping and trying to get crappie on brush, docks, et cetera, et cetera, it's got a purpose. So uh, I had Jimmy rigged this mount on here so I can run another camera and film the screen while I'm trying to do the long pole jigging there with the crappie. And the way I've got this rig, you can't see now obviously with no camera on there, but the camera is kind of shooting up angle at the screen and where I'm sitting, I'm looking down the screen. Because the way I had rigged it before, when I tried to film the screen in the past, it was kind of a, a little bit of a disaster. I'd set up a tripod here in the floor of the kayak. And so it set up higher and it was in my way. Like I'd have the camera filming the screen and then I couldn't have see the screen because of the dang camera. And then when you'd bring a fish in, obviously you got this tripod in the floor. So you're like, well, gosh, this is at risk of getting knocked over or something. So it didn't really work out, but I think this mount here has a lot of um, potential. Now I know some of you will say, well, Justin, why don't you just film through your Garmin on the, on the Garmin app? Well, you can't with this model a fish finder I have, it doesn't have the ability to record your screen. So that's that's the reason why I have to use a camera to film the screen. But what I wanted to do, since it was my first time using that really long crappie pole and I was kind of learning something new that I hadn't done before, I thought I would film it and just show you all the process of me learning even though i clearly look like i'm learning out here catfishing today like i don't know what the hell i'm doing with all the trouble we've had but um definitely on that crappie trip with the long poles wouldn't do that but unfortunately a monsoon hit about an hour into the trip and i said hell with it but at some point i'm going to get back out there and play with that thing and um I think it's going to be useful in certain situations. It's not something I'm going to use all the time, but there's certain scenarios where that long rod is going to be beneficial to me, I think. And I'm going to try to film some of that when I get out there to do it. But I got that mount on there in the meantime. I'll have to take it down. I'll have to remove it completely for tournament day because it'll be in the way of my measuring board. But um, I think it's really going to work out. Some of the things I, I DIY and Jimmy rig together, just, I end up regretting it. You know, I'll, <laughs> and I'm sure some of y'all like this too. You, you think you're going to DIY something to save a few bucks instead of buying the finished made product of whatever you need. And then you end up spending more trying to DIY something between the money you spend on parts and your time you put into it, you spend more than what you could have just bought the dang thing you needed to begin with. But uh, I think this DIY job is going to work out. What I, and I'll show you here, tell you what I've done. This is a, the piece I've got the graph mounted to is a piece of Hobie H-Rail that goes across here. That is a H-Rail ram ball mount here. And I just took some ram ball pieces, some joints and one inch balls and went up to a quarter inch male thread that plugged into a camera adapter and just articulate it in a way where I can film that screen. So nothing fancy or elaborate, but it gets the job done. And I already had all those pieces there in my shed, so didn't have to buy anything new. That's even better. But yeah, y'all. That 10 foot pole I got, I got a buddy of mine, he's gonna give me one of his 12 foot rods. He said, he had, he had bought, I think two 12 foot rods, he said. And then he sold his boat, so he don't need them anymore. So he said he's gonna give me one. I'm gonna try it out too. The situation I found myself in, needing that longer rod so today i was trying to catch some bait and i it was a windy day i couldn't catch any skipjack that day i couldn't catch any shad but i found some crappie on some brush and i was having a hard time casting because of the wind 
And I was like, you know, if I had me a long rod, I could just dip that jig down in that brush. But I couldn't, couldn't do it with the rod. I, my six foot ultralight rod, I couldn't, I didn't have enough length. That's what she said. But a longer rod, I could do that. So I just got to get better at it. I got to practice with it. It was fun. The fish, I caught a few fish doing it. It was fun. Not the same kind of fun as when I just go out with my ultralight rod, but different kind of fun, but fun nonetheless. I'm all the time trying to experiment. I've got stuff that I know works, that I enjoy doing. Productive techniques. But I'm always tinkering with stuff, trying to make things better. Trying to find a new wrinkle that might get me an extra bite. Like these, these flies. You know, my buddy Dewey put me on them flies, I guess about, I guess it's been about two years now. And I started using them on my suspend fishing rigs. And they've been a home run on suspend fishing. I've caught a bunch of extra fish. I've got some big fish. My biggest blue in 2024 thus far was caught on a dang fly. So they've been real productive on the suspend fishing rigs. About two months ago, I decided to add the flies to the dragging rigs. I had held off on doing that because my thought was you've just got an extra exposed hook on your dragging rig. Like I just, I just knew it was going to be snagged all the time. But for whatever reason, a couple months ago, I was like, you know what? Let's just experiment with it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. And I took it out. And I, I pulled it all morning long, never got that fly snagged one time. And I've yet to get the fly. Every time I've gotten snagged, it ain't been the fly that snagged me. So from that aspect, it's been really good. But what I'd hoped to accomplish with the flies on the dragging rigs is to maybe potentially hook into some more flatheads because I rarely catch a flathead dragging. I mean, it's rare. Catch a lot of them suspended, catch a lot of them with baits sitting on bottom. Rarely catch one dragging. And I thought that fly might just give me a little something extra, looking like a live bait fish as it pulls along. Maybe they'd, maybe it would get some more flatheads, but thus far I've yet to catch a flathead with it. And I've yet to catch, I've caught some fish on the fly itself. Something got hit. Here we go, one of the suspend rigs. Watch it, watch it go down. Watch it go down right there. Nice takedown, nice takedown. Nice takedown right there. That's on our head bait. It'd be nice if this was a flathead. Since I was just talking about him, it'd be right on cue. Well, it's nice to get the dang suspended bait hit though. Y'all, I may on tournament day, I may just be spot locked, buddy. Anchored. Just sit somewhere, get bit, great, you don't. You just move a little further. That may be what I end up doing. Maybe what I have to do. Don't matter to me, I just wanna catch them, man. Whatever it takes. This is a better fish right here, though. I think it's gonna be the biggest one. He's pulling, man, look at him go. Oh, man, look at him go. This is going to be the biggest one yet this morning. Y'all wave over at them bass fishermen. We'll show them what a real fish looks like here in a minute. This is a good one. I knew when I saw that rod going down, he was going to be a good one. Yeah, it's a blue. I think this one's this one's at least comparable size to that one we lost at the side of the kayak. Nice fish nonetheless. 
Oh goodness, he splashed me. I got water in my mouth. He get you all wet? I hope he did. If I gotta get splashed in the face, y'all should have to too. All my fishing buddies out here, I you need to experience what I'm experiencing, by gosh. Well, I guess we'll be sitting here a little while longer, y'all. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, buddy. Come here, fish. Uh-uh, oh, uh-uh. No, sir. No, sir. You gonna just calm your butt down. We don't reward bad behavior around here. When you calm, you can come inside. You don't get to show out and just get your way because you're throwing a temper tantrum. That ain't how things work, buddy. I know it's 2024 and that's how society is these days, but I'm old school when it comes to that. It's pretty good fish, y'all. Tell you what. Let's just lower this bait back down here before we hold him up for the front camera. I'm gonna rehook it. It looks like it's a little loose right there. Bait still looks okay. There we go. Yeah, let's lower that back down. Get it on get it down there near bottom before we hold him up. This fish, he's not super fat not going to be super heavy but he's long which is what i need on tournament day long and skinny in a kayak term is better than heavy let's get our camera out here let's see he gets y'all wet on the left y'all survived it how'd that happen i got soaking wet man i had water dripping out my mouth and my nose y'all didn't somehow come here fish Boy, he's clamped down. He don't want to open up for nothing. Okay. Hold yourself up there, fish. That's a pretty good one, man. Again, lengthwise, he's dark, too. I mean, look how dark he is. He's probably been up in the shallows. I bet these fish, there's that creek right up here above us. I bet they work in and out of there retreat back down here to this river bend with all the wood and stuff, hunker down and then go in out of there to feed. All right, y'all. Let's, let's get him going here. Get y'all here. We'll give him some little camera time on the release. Tell these people to buy a fish. He says, he says he wants you to subscribe and come back. He wants y'all to see him again someday, he said. Well, folks, I feel like we're on to something. We're just sitting here, not a bit of water movement, but we're near all that wood that we kept getting snagged in. We saw some fish on and around it on the graph and here we are catching fish sitting still now this one's getting hit a line swimming look at it it's going down here we go again here we go again oh he let it go he let it go let's see if he'll come back Make sure he didn't get our bait. No, nope, didn't get the bait. Just didn't didn't hook up. Here's somebody over there talking behind us. It ain't them guys. It must be somebody in the house over yonder. Well, if his voice is carrying from that house, I can imagine what my voice is doing out here on the water. <laughs> All these damn bass fishermen are going to hear everything we say to each other today. The eavesdropping. 
Yeah, y'all. Hey, buddy. It's exciting, y'all. Coming down here, figuring out a. We're, we're, I feel like we're on to a little something here. This set and steel. Yeah, we had the other bite there dragging. But the fish that that we lost here at the side of the kayak that had ate that bait while I was letting line out, it was set and steel. And now that one, set and steel, are both way better quality fish than the other one. So, uh, and one there had ate the bait that was sitting on, well, just off the bottom there at the dragon rig, the other suspend rig. So maybe it's just the fact that they're, that they're set and steel. We're, we're figuring things out here, y'all. About to figure out another fish. He was hitting it. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shine this transducer toward toward that bait. Let's see if I can bring this in. Okay. So this, let's adjust our gain a little bit there too. That's our sinker and our bait right there so we'll keep it pointed on that one so if a fish hits it we'll see if we can catch him eye in the sky up here cia style yeah man this is i'm suddenly feeling i was a little bit discouraged there when we're pulling along and i'm snagged 38 times in the first hour Cause my dragon rigs, I mean, my sinkers I make, I ain't trying to toot my own horn here or anything, but I feel like my sinkers are the best. Uh, I mean, I truly believe that. I use what I use on my gear because I feel like it's the best to get the job done for me and what I do. And I make these sinkers because they serve a purpose for me. And here comes, I saw him kind of on the screen. He was in and out in and out of the transducer there, but he was, here comes a, here comes a couple more. Let's see what happens here. Well, he's coming right up to it, ain't he? Oh, he kept swimming. Here goes some more. There's some fish working through that. I don't know what they are. There's some fish working through. We're on some right here. But, um, You know, the gear I use, it, it serves a purpose for me. And so these sinkers I make, I make them as long as I do because they pull through cover better. I make them as heavy as I do because I wanna, I wanna keep my baits down when I'm trolling at faster speeds, and especially when I'm trolling into the current. Having the heavier sinker allows you to do that. It also, the heavier sinker allows you to, when you're pulling along mud bottoms, the heavier weight is stirring up more mud down there. And I want I want a damn dust plume. When I'm pulling these baits along bottom, man, I want to kick up some mud. Because I want, you know, because those fish, those catfish are oftentimes down in that mud. Like when they're eating mussels and stuff, like they're down in there, they're stirring up the bottom when they're eating the mussels and stuff. Some of the foods they eat, carp, suckers, Buffalo, you know, catfish will eat all three of those species of fish. Well, when, if you've ever seen a carp feed in the shallows, he'll be, he'll have his tail up in the air, his nose down, and he'll be rooting around in that mud, and there's always this dust plume around them where they're kicking all that up. Well, when you're dragging along, if you can create a dust plume like that, you're creating an, a, a situation where these catfish are used to feeding in. I mean, if they're feeding on carp or suckers, for instance, they're undoubtedly looking for them dust plume-like areas down there. And so I want my sinkers to do that. So that's why I do what I would do. But when you're pulling through some debris that's like we've went through this morning, you know, it, it's it's tough. What we got going on here in this rod? Something's pecking at it. You 
without any current my line ain't tight it's tough to know if he's really got it or if he's just messing with it I'd hate for him to just kind of be sitting there with it and have it just crank down yeah he's got it. oh I pulled it free from him Pulled it free from him. Boy, he's got me all tangled up there, don't he? I'll tell you what we're going to do with that. Since we, since these rigs are just kind of casting out and sitting there, we're about to ditch the fly on this. Again, the fly experiment was to hopefully pick us off some flatheads while we were dragging but thus far i ain't caught no flatheads doing it and so they're not serving the purpose i need right now especially in this situation i should have probably switched out that head bait before i threw that out we'll let it sit there a little while right here we got another one coming up to our this bait right here on the left we had another one come up to it yeah y'all I mean as many fish as we're seeing here I'm kind of content with just sitting here right now and see what happens because let, let, let's say Let's say what I do this afternoon and wherever I end up fishing tomorrow don't pan out, right? I could come back here on tournament day and either if the wind is up, pull up there on that island like I did last year, cast baits out, or, or do what I'm doing today and ever 10, 15, maybe start up a little higher, maybe above that creek, and ever 10, 15 minutes just kind of work my way down along through here Pro probably what i'll do we probably need to get on the move at some point uh, even if we're still getting bit here just to see how much stuff we're going to see on the screen up through here like is all this wood the debris we went over like is it all kind of in one general area here where it's settled or is it just all the way up through here i don't know you know, before, I had never fished here before last year. I fished a pre-fishing day out here, and I caught that big one, which prompted me to come back here for tournament day last year. So I fished here twice before today. And so I don't have a, you know, I don't have, I don't have a lot of knowledge for this area as far as what's going on here. But just looking at it on a map, I mean, from a macro level, zooming out, just seeing this big horseshoe river bend I mean it makes like a loop right here on the river like and you got that creek right up there that flows in right in the middle of it like that's I see places like that on a map those are money man those are just good places to fish year round but now you throw in this situation where you got some obvious cover here yeah I'm feeling pretty good Based on what I'm feeling right now, y'all, I mean, the fish I've caught thus far ain't going to win me no tournament, but, I mean, step one in tournaments catching fish, right? <laughs> you know, that's what you got to do, step one. Oh, that's a nice one right there, man. Look at this one going through. Don't know what he is, but there's a lot of fish in this area. The wind is just starting to just barely blow. You know, if we're not going to have current, what we need is wind blowing in a consistent direction. That'll allow us to be able to cast baits out. Gusting wind or swirling wind will be our downfall. Because what will happen is the wind will blow you one way, and then a boat will come through and work you back another way, and then your baits are just 
back and forth, back and forth across the bottom. I don't want that. I want to, where I cast them, I want them to be. You know, I want all my lines tangled up and everything. I'm feeling pretty good about things right now though, y'all. You know what I'm gonna have to do though? This, um, normally, here's what I, here's the thing. I like posting my videos in sequential order. Whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm fishing for, because everything kind of flows to me. You know, if I'm telling, if I'm out here telling stories today, and maybe there's a follow-up to a story on the next video, well, if those videos are out of order, it don't make no damn sense. Or if I'm in the next trip, I'm referencing something that happened today, and you ain't seen this video, well, it don't make sense, right? But tournament Saturday, if I post this video before then, I'm telling the other competitors stuff that I've had to figure out on my own. It's like you, you show in your hand right after the cards are dealt, you know? But I ain't done worth a crap lately on videos. Like I said, fishing back home has been a struggle for me. I just ain't been doing no good. And so I've been behind on content Normally, I try to keep myself about a week ahead on videos. That way, the reason I do that is because, let's say I'm fishing somewhere and I get on a hot bite, man. Uh, maybe I'm just catching some big fish or a lot of fish, and I want to go back and hit that spot again. Well, unfortunately, when you making fishing videos people recognize backgrounds like i promise you when i said chickamauga and i've done a panoramic view with this camera today every which way i've turned people that fish down here regularly they know exactly where i'm at they're going to spot a tree a landmark something and they're going to know where i'm at so if i get on a pile of fish and i post that video the next day and i want to go back well guess what there's going to be 10 boats sitting on that spot so what I like to do is give myself a cushion. Well, if I catch big fish on the spot today, I can go hit it again a few more days before I post the video. And that way, when people show up, I'm already done with it and moved on. But lately, I've done so poorly fishing that I haven't been able to keep myself ahead. And I don't really care I don't care about it when I'm on a road trip like today, like, you know, a, a, a place like this, I'm not going to fish multiple days. Even if I got on fish, I'm probably not going to drive that far to go back to it the following day. But, um, you know, back home and stuff, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. So this situation though, I get on some fish, figure out a little something, and then I tell everything right before the tournament, I could be cutting my nose off to spot my face, as the old saying goes. You know, Bill Belichick, greatest football coach of all time, arguably, at least with his success anyway, he didn't hand over his playbook to the other team before the game started. So, I'll probably have to go ahead and post this video beforehand, though. And who knows, I may figure out something else. I mean, I've got the rest of today. I've got tomorrow for sure that I'm gonna be fishing somewhere down here. So here we go, here we go. Oh, he's pulling some line. He's pulling line. Boy, he's digging. Look at him go, man. Look at him go. This is a good one. We got another good one here. This is on the dragon rig we cast out. It's on one of the chunks. Man, how awesome would it be, y'all? All these guys I'm going to be fishing against, every single one of them are going to be pulling planer boards. That's all these guys do. And if the bite is, if, if these fish are wanting a bait set and still, and I'm the one person that would be anchor fishing in the tournament, holy cow, the potential... <laughs> Here's the other wild card knot. Of course, it's Monday. 
I was going to say, we don't want to stick a bunch of these fish right before the tournament, but we've got, a, what, five more days here for these fish to forgive me before we come back on tournament day, if we end up fishing here. Man, this fish is running the other way over here. He's going to get my other line, I feel like, but I think he's going to be worth it, if it even if he does. I'm trying to put pressure on him, bring him back this way, but he don't, he don't care. This fish don't care what y'all want. This fish has never cared about any of us. He does what he wants when he wants. He feels good though. He feels real good, folks. I think it will probably take three fish. This tournament scores three longest fish. I think it will probably take near 120 inches, maybe more, to win. Somebody will probably, the potential's there to get three over 40 inches for sure. So I would assume it would probably take, I can't remember what it took to win last year. I may pull up my phone here in a little while and, and see if I can find the results from last year and see what it, what it took to win. Conditions though last year were, we'd had some bad weather the night before, then the wind kicked up mid-morning there and got everybody was struggling with the wind everybody but me because i was on the bank but that was going to throw off the somebody got a 50 incher though last year they had a massive fish oh he's going to get my suspending rod now that's okay that's a good it's a good blue he's got my gosh he got my other back line over there and he's got my suspended line we're gonna have a tangled mess here but he's worth it I knew when he was running the other way, he was liable to get that other line we had cast out. And then he got in this suspended one up here. That's a good one right here. Let's see where my glove is. Hey fish, why don't you not run circles around that other line? Right there any more than you already have. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. I don't even know. Oh crap, look at this. He's come off the hook. I don't even know what's happened here, y'all. I guess he's worked himself free on the, on the lines or something. I think he's just lassoed right now, unless the stinker hooks maybe got him. But he's got lines around him every which way. But the hook, the hook from the rig is right there around all the lines. Oh, he, he does have a stinger fly in him. And he's lassoed. I wonder if, how am I gonna get hold of this thing? How am I gonna do this? Let's see if we can, come here fish. Oh, okay, I got him like that. <laughs> Gosh, what an ordeal to get him. I don't even know what's happened here. We didn't reel him in like that. I don't think. I, I don't know what happened with that. Maybe he had the bait and he worked himself free on the other lines. Maybe we did reel him in like that. I, hell if I know. That stinger fly saved us though, by gosh. <laughs> without, I just cut that fly off on the other one, but by gosh, without that fly, we lose this fish. And this is, this is a good one, man. Let's see if I can fish. Oh, he's not cooperative. No, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy, look at that. Biggest one of the day. He's dark too, man. These fish have been up shallow recently. Nice fish. Is it possible we really reeled that? He was barely skin hooked with that fly. There's no way as hard as he was pulling that that would have held. 
I don't know. I don't know. Either way, if that happened in a tournament, I wouldn't have been able to score him because he would have been foul hooked. Glad it happened today, fish, and not on tournament day. This is a heavy fish, though. I mean, this is a good one right here. If you got some friends down there, if I can get about three of you on tournament day, I'm in contention, fish. All right, let's let him go and sort out our mess here. And we'll see you, buddy. There he goes. He gone. <laughs> what an ordeal. Hey, either way though, buddy, that one right there, fist pump worthy, y'all. So let's see our mess here. Here, let me get y'all back in the chest. I don't know what happened with that. I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't have a clue. Sometimes, and this unfortunately happens, when a fish gets wrapped in your other line, sometimes he'll work himself down and that other line will pop a hook out. And, uh, you know, it's just one of them things you deal with. If you're going to fish with this many damn lines in a kayak, you're begging for it at some point, right? I don't know if that's what happened this time. I find it hard to believe as shallow as he was hooked that we could have reeled him in like that. But, you know, when we got him up here, that was the only hook that was in him. So... I don't know. I think we're going to get lucky here with our tangle too. This one here ain't too bad. Well, I say that. Now there's the fly that's we got to untangle too. Fly saved us on that one though. That fish would have been gone had it not been for the fly. Here we are again though, unedited, raw and uncut. And this kind of crap happens. Just what y'all wanted to spend your time watching is me picking out tangles right here. This is like some little girl at the schoolhouse got chewing gum in her hair they got to pick out. We'll get it here directly though, this one ain't I've picked out far worse tangles than this. I, I assure you that. There we go. We got that one undone. Let's, let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, we got this one completely out now. Okay. Let's throw that one over there. Let's reel this one up. Just make sure that it didn't get the bait knocked off. And I think we're gonna, you know what I kind of want to do? And this is stupid. Never, you don't, the old saying, you don't leave fish to go find fish. But we're out here today. This ain't just about catching fish today. We're out here to get information. So what I want to do is move, not far. I want to go up here closer to where this creek comes in. And I want to see what's going on up here. Let's do that since we're gonna, we'll just switch out all of our baits and we'll reset a little higher up. And see, cause again, if we come out here, if I come out here on tournament day, I'd like to ideally, especially right there at, at first light to kind of have, be on, setting on the best possible place. Actually, you know what, let me just, let me just mark that little waypoint there to make sure I find this spot again. Let's slide up. So again, right here, this island to our left, this is where I was at last year. That little grassy area right there is where I pulled the kayak up on the bank and cast out. So I know I can catch fish there. We may, here's what we may do. We may just go right above this creek. Let's see where we're at here. We'll work our way up here. But you know what though? Definitely this, this uh, set and steel, having baits down there. I think that's the ticket today. It's the ticket today for sure. 
because God knows we can't drag through here with all the debris. So I'm feeling pretty good right now, man. We've got some, we've had some misfortune losing that one fish, that fish there being, I mean, ultimately when I landed him, he was foul hook. No matter how he got hooked initially, he was foul hook. So turn my purpose, I could not score that fish. But just for educational purposes out here today, trying to figure out something for the tournament, happy to get him. Good, good to see a fish like that, get a size reference. Now we know for sure there's at least three of them right here. Normally, you, 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 when you pre-fish areas, you run the risk of sticking all the fish that you need on tournament day. You know, sore lip them and then they don't bite on tournament day. But with me having the opportunity to come down here several days in advance of the term, I'm not as concerned about catching a fish today and needing to catch him again on Saturday. It's what I would be. Let's say I was fishing on Friday and I'm fishing the term on Saturday. That's when you kind of run into, like, you, whatever fish you catch on Friday, you're probably not going to stick again on Saturday. But you never know. But either way, man, this has been productive so far. We're just going to run right up here a little further. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go above this creek next. And um, we'll just, we'll just, I won't, ideally, if it wasn't such a, I know there's going to be boats working in and out of this creek because every bass fisherman's fishing the creeks right now. I'd like to really set up in the old creek mouth that was here before they made the reservoir, like that original creek mouth. That's where I'd like to set up. But that that opening there is so tight. Would it'd be a, it'd be it'd be a problem for us with all the boat traffic. So we'll go maybe just right above it and set up and see what happens. Encouraged though, y'all. I'm real encouraged today. Man. Excited. I was excited to come down here. Got a little discouraged after all the snags right away, but we've turned a corner here. We've turned a corner on today. Let's get us a big gulp while we continue our, our journey up here. Speaking of bass fishermen, here comes another one. They are in and out, in and out all day long. Normally I make fun of them for making about five casts and then running 80 miles an hour to the next spot. But after that one fellow over here on the island fished it for a half hour, I'm, I was wishing he was like the others that would come in, fish, and then get the hell on. I don't know why I don't like talking on camera around people. I'm just weird about it. I always have been. I was watching the other YouTuber the other night named Sam Sullick. He's kind of blown up the internet. He's got a real successful channel. He, he works out and stuff, bodybuilds. And I ain't into that kind of thing, but he's so popular on YouTube that he just, he shows up on everybody's feeds. And so I was watching him, man, he's in a crowded gym. He's sitting there, camera, posing, talking. I'm like, man, I wish I was that narcissistic that I could do that kind of thing. I guess you'd have to be a little bit, you'd have to have a pretty big ego, I guess, to be comfortable just, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that. It seems like you, I feel, if I was, if I had a bigger ego, I would probably be better at talking on the camera around people than what I am. I'm just weird like that, I guess. Been seeing a bunch of fish though as we come up through here. It looked like bait fish near bottom, so. We're gonna cozy up over here. Try to get on the edge of the channel right here in front of this island and cast baits toward the opening of that old creek mouth. And hopefully not get run over 
by all these bass fishermen today. Trying to find the edge over here where it starts to come up. It should be coming up on it. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. You see where it starts to incline? Now it's inclining real fast. Ooh, look at that. There's some, there's some brush right over here. Got some fish on it there to the side. Yeah, we, if I had my ultralight rod, I'd be excited about that, but we ain't ultralight fishing today. We got, we got other fish to catch. Let's run out. Here's the couple. There we go. Okay. Now let's spotlight. Let's cut us some more baits right fast, y'all. We're going to refresh everything. Okay. We're going to do two heads, two chunks. We'll suspend one of each and we'll cast out one of each. This first half of a skipjack, the head and the first midsection are my favorite cuts. People often ask about using tails. You can catch fish on tails. I've caught fish on them. But when it comes to confidence, from the dorsal fin forward is what I've got the most confidence in. And of course the head baits are just over the course of time, the head baits always seem to get more big fish. I've caught a bunch of big fish on chunks, but statistically speaking, a big head bait will get you big fish more regularly, I feel like. And, you know, let's be real. Whether it does or it don't, it's about what you've got confidence in. Having confidence in what you're doing is, pro I mean, honestly, most important thing to anything in life. Confidence allows you to stick with something, even if it's not going well. Because if you're confident in something, you're, you're going to stick with it because you know it's the matter of time. If you don't have confidence in something and you're not getting results, then you're going to be second-guessing yourself. You're going to be changing things all the time, moving, changing rigs, changing techniques, changing baits. And then you spend all that time with time that you could have had baits in the water, you spend changing things because you don't have confidence to stick with what you're doing. Since we're suspending now, I'm going to turn that rod holder and face it more forward. That'll hopefully help us from getting tangled up as we reel these fish in from the back. We're just going to see what's going on up here at this creek mouth. We know we can catch fish farther down there. And, you know, the old saying, you don't leave fish to go find fish, but on a day like today where we're, we're just trying to figure stuff out, that's most important today. Um, I think it's worth moving a little bit here for. You know, initially the plan was to keep moving all day and just cover a mile and a half, two miles of this ledge, just keep working our way all the way around that bend. mark some fish along the way hopefully but now that we've stumbled into a little something here we got to change our approach and i want to figure out where i need to start at on tournament day if i end up coming out here on tournament day which maybe i will depending on how tomorrow goes. Okay. Got that bait 
air cast out right basically right on the edge of that creek mouth maybe up a little shallower than what I would want it to be but we'll see what happens there Move this bait around, put this rod holder around too there. Move it toward the front. There we go. Now let's cast this one out. And definitely, if I choose to anchor on Saturday, I won't be, I probably won't be casting out these dragging rigs. I'll have normal normal setups this is what i got tied on today so this is what we're going with hell of a job casting there justin hell of a job damn it y'all didn't see that another one for the blooper reels here we gotta cut another bait i just sling it off the damn hook too That's why I shouldn't have let y'all cast. I should have known you'd backlash the damn line and throw the bait off the hook. I should have casted that bait for you. I don't know why I let you. You told me you knew how to cast a bait caster, and I believed you. And then you just went and done that right there. Making a fool of yourself on camera. Making an absolute fool of yourself. You'd think it was the first time I ever casted before. In my defense though, casting these dragon rigs ain't really ideal. But we improvising out here. Okay. Now I'm still all well, I'm still all backlashed in there. This may be a disaster trying to cast this with my line the way it is. I'll get y'all in the chest here too. I don't want to fling y'all out on the way. Oh my gosh, now I've got it hung in this line. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, folks. You cannot make this stuff up. I try to fix y'all camera in the chest so I don't throw y'all overboard. And while I'm doing that, I wrap this line I'm about to cast around my suspend rod. We got to get it together, folks. This is a damn, this is a damn embarrassment today. <laughs> I mean, we got to get it together here. Okay, that's better. All right, I think we're in business now here, folks. I think we're in business now. I think this one's, if I had to make a bet on which rod gets hit, if we get one hit, I think it's going to be this one because it's kind of more where I want it to be. I hope we don't have a bass fisherman run it over. I just want to put a little time in here. We'll give this spot 15 minutes maybe. We'll just see what happens here. I just want to see what's going on right here in front of this creek now. We saw some smaller fish there on the bottom as we were making our way along, so we'll just see. We'll give it a few minutes. There must be some there must be some crappie over there or something. Cause them fellas, there's two boats right there real close to each other. I can't imagine being a crappie fisherman or a sauger fisherman. Man, them guys get right on top of each other in the boats and stuff. Like, I don't know. When I go fishing, I don't want to be left the hell alone. I want some space. 
if I wanted to be social with people, I'd I'd go to I don't even know where people who are social go, to be honest with you, because I never go to them places. I ain't like that. I don't mind talking to y'all here on camera, but I don't want to be in a group of people actually talking. Not very often, anyway. Friday night at the meet and greet thing there for Catfish Sumo. That's my social activity for the week. Like, I mean, I, that kind of thing once in a while is fine, but I couldn't do it every day. I'm too introverted. I just can't, I ain't cut out for it. I'm weird like that. I don't know why. I've always been like that. I mean, my whole life. It's not something new. It's like my whole life I've been like that. <clears throat> I'm very encouraged right now, y'all. We'll see what happens here, but we know there's all that debris down there, so... That's definitely an option. And like I said, before I leave here today, I got to go back down river to go to the car. When we're done up here, I'm going to run past where I launched at down to another ledge downstream. It's a little deeper down there. There's like a, a hole, according to the map, I've never fished there. But according to the map, there's like a hole, it's about 70 feet deep, and then another nice looking ledge. And so I thought I'd go down there and check it out. Cause that would give me a couple options out of the same launch site. I've got to see where our our check-in is at on tournament day. Uh, last year it was at Chester Frost Park. So I had to, I had to leave a little early to make sure I got there on time. I'll have to see if it's at the same place. So I, that'll factor into my tournament decisions too, as far as how far away I have to travel from that location. keep hearing something right behind me. I guess it's that guy. I don't know. There comes another boat. Which way is he going? I hope he's going in the creek. Oh, uh, looks like he's going to come out. This will be the thing on tournament day with all the bass boats. Like if I was to set up here, I mean, there would be boats in and out right over top of your lines the whole time. It's gonna be such a different day. I mean, this many boats that we're seeing on a Monday, Saturday is gonna be just a whole different animal. Or something got hit. That one. I felt him thump it, man. Here we go, here we go. Oh, he dropped it too, man. He thumped it. He thumped it. I thought we was going to give these bass fishermen here a show. I thought they was going to see what a real fish looked like. It's no bite, though. There's some fish up here. How many fish you thinking fella's gonna catch today? That's an older boat, but I bet they've probably still got 50,000 or more in it. It'd be interesting to do a cost analysis breakdown. You get one of these bass fishermen, they say they got 80,000 in their boat, another 20,000 gear, electronics, etc. You look at how many fish they catch over the course of the ownership of that boat and break it down to how much each one of those fish cost them. <laughs> I, mean, I bet. I bet it's a few dollars a fish. There goes another one out and here comes another one down.
big hesitation of fishing a place like this on tournament day. But I told Mike, I was like, man, you know, I know you want to have a river, you want to have several tournaments on the Tennessee River as part of this trail, but like Chickamauga on a Saturday, on a Saturday in the month of April, like you, it's just, it's hell on earth. Like, you know, last year we had the tournament on a Sunday. So, I mean, there was boat traffic, but it wasn't like, you didn't have all the bass tournaments going on on Sunday. And you could have this tournament here in the fall or the winter and there wouldn't be as many tournaments going on. But a Saturday in spring, like holy hell, the amount, I mean, there'll be, there'll be 500 boats out here. I promise you somewhere down here, there'll be at one of the major ramps, there'll be a 200 boat tournament going on. And then there'll be some smaller tournaments going on, local clubs and stuff at different ramps. So, I mean, you'll have 500 plus bass boats on the water Saturday. Like, I mean, that just, it beats the life out of you after a while. But, you know what, that's the thing about tournament, like we're all, when you fish in a tournament in those conditions, it sucks, but everybody's on the same playing field. Everybody out here, we're on the same body of water, we're all gonna be dealing with the same, the same crap. So you just gotta adapt and go get it done. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's what we're doing out here today. We come out here with a plan and we quickly realized that the plan was gonna have to be changed. And here we are making the most of it. So, what we've got to figure out what we're going to do next, though, is do we want to do, do we want to keep doing what we're doing now? Or do we possibly want to try dragging some more and see if we can get some fish on the move? I mean, yeah, we caught our fish set in steel, but, but, if we could have dragged through that area, would we have caught them moving? Still got a lot of questions. I still got to tell y'all some stories too from my Vegas trip. I was I covered a few of them there on my ultralight trip the other day. But I, I still got some more stuff there. We didn't get to all of it. So I went to Las Vegas back in back in March there and I guess it's been close to three weeks now since I went on that trip I just again I stunk it up fishing lately and I ain't put out many videos because of that so I ain't been able to tell all these stories so I went out there to Las Vegas on vacation and we we gambled a little bit but we mostly you go to Vegas there's so much other stuff to do I mean it's it's a cool place if you've never been I mean even if you're not into gambling it's worth going once because it's just there's so many things going on out there and yeah, let me spin that transducer around let's do this let's get our front bait and focus here before I okay right there's our bait keep an eye on that but um all this stuff to do out there in las vegas so when we got out there we flew in on friday and we got there of course you go i live in eastern time zone and you go to vegas it's pacific time zone so you gain three hours as you fly basically and so we got in there to vegas friday afternoon and we had a show planned for friday night um jersey boys which is a musical, and I ain't into musicals, uh, about, I think his name was Frankie Valley. I think. I think that's what his name was. But it was a musical about his life and uh, the songs he wrote. And my girlfriend was into it. She likes musicals and that kind of music. I recognized a few songs, but, uh, you know, I, it was one of them things I went to because I had to. There's another one. Um, 
But anyway, we do that on Friday night. Saturday, though, we had a couple things planned that I actually wanted to do. We went to the Spear during the day, which is like a big snow globe looking thing out there in Vegas. They put all these designs on the outside of it. And then inside of it, they got a theater, basically. It's like a 360 degree, all around you, top of you, everything theater. It's pretty awesome. So we did that on Saturday daytime and then saturday night we went to a hockey game and well let me tell you what happened at the hockey game so first off the hockey game was awesome uh, the arena is right there on the strip easy to get to and we go into the game man and the the road directly in front of us these people come in and their friend that was with them man he had been on the sauce all day long apparently like he was gone like they they're they're walking this guy in he don't have a clue what world he's in he's that friend you know everybody's got that friend in the friend group like he's that guy for them so they're walking this guy in and it it, it reminded me y'all remember that movie uh, weekend at bernie's from the 80s I ain't seen that movie since I was a kid. I I, I don't remember all of the storyline, but basically Bernie had died. And I think if like music played, he would walk around, even though he was dead, like he would walk around. And so they would kind of walk with him and move along beside him. Anyway, uh, this is when I saw them walking their drunk friend into this row in front of us, that's one of the first thing I thought of was Weekend at Bernie's. Cause this guy, he was gone, man. But they get him to his seat, and he's instantly, he's just slumped over, man. Like, he's out. Like, he's, he's gone. But a few minutes into the game, he wakes up just long enough to barf all over the floor right in front of him. And how in the world he didn't hit the person in front of him, I don't know. You talk about divine intervention. Because, I mean, the rose... They're very close together. Like the stadium, you're kind of staggered up. So you're almost on top of the people in the row in front of you that's kind of below you, kind of. And so, man, I don't know how it, how he didn't puke all over the person in front of him, but he missed them, but he got it all over himself, all over the floor. And at that point in time, his friends had had it. Like they they just got him they got him like up under his under his shoulders and pretty much just staggered his ass out of there and they left they never come back but you got this big pile of vomit right there on the floor so the poor arena staff girl she she brought them the mop and the and the stuff over there. she come and clean i guess that out there in las vegas that kind of thing probably happens all the time at the hockey game i'd say they're used to it but anyway uh that was the first thing that happened at the hockey game there but as the game goes on, there's another guy. The drunk guy was here in the row in front of us. And then below it, there's another guy. There's two guys there, older guys. And throughout the game, like, they are super into the game. And I was just thinking, like, they're just hardcore fans or something. Like, it's like me at a Tennessee football game. You know, you're living and dying with everything that's happening. Like, that's how they were the whole game. And... As, as we got toward the end of the game, Las Vegas had it had it wrapped up. They were going to win. This guy, man, he's celebrating. He's, he's getting with everybody around him and stuff. And at one point, he turns around to me and my girlfriend there. And he's wanting to high five. And he, and he hands me, like physically hands me, this ticket. It's a betting ticket. It's out there in, in Las Vegas. If you place a wager on a game... They print you off this, basically looks like a receipt, like a shopping receipt. And it'll have a, a barcode and the game and the line and your wager amount, what you win and all that. And then if you win, you take that back to the sports book there at the casino and they cash you out. This guy, again, he's here. You got a row that's now empty. And then my row, he hands me his betting ticket to show me how much he's won. This dude had bet $4,000 on that game. Now, Vegas was heavily favored. 
So it had like 4,000 to win, I think it was 2,600 and something dollars. So this ticket that he has just handed me is worth like $6,600. And he's excited, you know, he's wanting to show everybody. He had handed it around to a few people there around him. But I've got this $6,600 ticket in my hand and I'm like, boy, this guy's real lucky. I'm honest because I could have for damn sure outrun him. And I could have took off with that ticket. He'd have never caught me. I'd have had $6,600. But man, this guy was just handing it around to everybody to show him he was proud of it. But I was like, well, that explains why he's so into the game. He had four grand riding on that thing. And he didn't look like the type that should be betting four grand. I know you shouldn't be stereotyping and, you know, can't judge a book by its cover, but he didn't look like the type that had four grand, if you know what I mean. Especially to be riding on a game, but sure as the world he did. So I had me an opportunity to be $6,600 richer if I just took off running. <laughs> and he keeps handing them tickets out like that. Somebody's going to do him that way. I promise you that. He'd have never caught me, that's for sure. I could outrun him for sure, but nevertheless, that guy won $6,600. But that was, a, that was a pretty cool experience. Definitely recommend you go out there. Recommend going to Spear and recommend going to the hockey game. Here's the thing about the Spear, though. And we didn't know. We had never been there. It's new, because I hadn't been to Vegas in several years. Used to go all the time and... and then COVID hit and, you know, it just, it'd been a few years. But we get tickets to the Spear and it says it's a two hour show. Like you show up, our tickets were two o'clock when we were supposed to be there. So we got there early, like 1.30, 1.40 somewhere, you know. We thought we'd go on in, get our seat and everything. Well, they don't even let you in the door. If you're t if the show starts at two, you don't. They don't open the doors till two. Everybody's lining up outside before then. So we got there way too early. And the first hour of the spear is not the actual show. You walk around, look at these robot-looking things, and they've got like interactive. Like you go to this one and it explains how the sound system set up, and you go to this one and it takes a picture of you and turns you into like an avatar thing that you can download it's, it's honestly kind of lame but that's what you do for the first hour you walk around and look at this and what i figured out they do is once you're in you're in like you're trapped in there so if you want a snack or a drink or something you got to buy from their concession stand you want to take a guess how much it costs for a pepsi i got a pepsi y'all i ain't talking about a two liter i got a 20 ounce pepsi seven dollars highway robbery see so anyway we go through that and, and we're like boy this is just a this is just a sham to get us in the door an hour early so we're forced to buy overpriced drinks and snacks but once the show started and it lasted i think 45 50 minutes on the show it was freaking awesome it was worth totally worth the cost of admission i think the mission i think it was a hundred right at a hundred dollars per ticket but you're in this globe. Like, again, you're in this theater that's just a big globe. And it plays this movie, which I won't spoil the movie, but it's the premise of the, more, the movie. The storyline of it is the, that human beings had killed planet Earth. A few humans escaped to go through a spaceship to another planet. And the humans had to be put to sleep to make the journey. And when you wake up, they had made this video of what Earth used to look like to jog their memory or whatever. Okay, that's the premise of the story. So the movie is called Postcard from Earth. And it's like showing you things on Earth to jog the astronauts' memory or whatever. But we're seeing it. And it's like we're there because we're in this globe. I mean, everything's in front of you, beside you, on top of you. It's like... You almost like when you're at one point you're flying through some mountains like you get that feeling in your stomach like you're actually moving even though you're sitting still because it, it's it tricks your eyes and your mind to think that you're actually there and you're moving 
and it had these animal scenes and all these different places on earth like it i mean it was it was pretty awesome so definitely worth going to out there great show in the theater i can't wait to see what else they do like that's the only thing they do at the spear right now is they show that show and then they do some concerts but like over the course of time like i'm i'm curious to see what else they come up with for that like it's going to be awesome but if you do go don't be dumb like me and my girlfriend and get there early you could show up if your if your show starts at two you can show up at 2 30 walk around look at all the robots and then be ready for your show in plenty of time because them robots i don't remember how many they were they were like six or eight of them something like that no, we wasn't impressed with any of them like we did the little avatar thing you wait in line forever and you get your picture and it turns you into like a little 10 second avatar that you can download on your phone and it was it was free to do that but it was yeah it was dumb on the other stuff there it's like yeah but very very cool thing to do if you go and we stayed on fremont street which oh every time i've been to vegas i've never actually stayed on the las vegas strip ever uh i go to the strip but i always stay on fremont which is like downtown las vegas old vegas because there's more casinos closer together there and it seems like i don't want to say the gambling's better there because you lose no matter where you go but it seems like your money lasts longer down there you lose slower <laughs> on fremont than you do on the strip so we stayed down there and it's fun just walking around on fremont we, we was we were, i can't remember what night it was was it after the hockey game or the next day we're walking down the sidewalk and we come up on this girl and kind of like the guy at the hockey game like she's out like she's there just passed out face first down on the sidewalk and people just walking by not a care in the world she had one friend there with her that was just sitting there on the ground with her there was some cops at the end of the road and like they wasn't they wasn't concerned about it in the least you know they're the cops down there downtown they're pretty much i think just there to break up fights or somebody gets robbed go chase somebody down but the drunks like they're not <laughs> i mean this girl she just laying there anything in the world happened here i mean she's there in a damn skirt and a little tank top and people make people make dumb decisions when they're in vegas y'all but fremont it's cool it's uh it's at the end of las vegas boulevard just at the strip and there's a bus stop at the end so you can go out there and get your bus pass and the bus stops at like every casino down through the strip so you can hop on it and make your way down now that's in the past that's what i've done i get a bus pass but this time i ended up ubering everywhere which added quite a bit to the cost of the trip but the advantage of uber is you don't have to stop at every bus stop you know because it, it, if you want to go from fremont down to the end of the strip let's say you want to like the hockey game for instance it's down there by new york new york on that end like to take the bus down there hell it'd take you an hour to get down there to go through all the stops and let people on and off but you can uber down there in 15 minutes so we ended up doing that we ubered everywhere but it did add a lot to the cost here's the thing y'all how long have we been sitting here now long enough that we should have gotten bit i feel like I mean, here's what i'm wondering i'm thinking out loud right now since my plan coming out here kind of got wrecked with wanting to just drag this bend all the way around do we want to try dragging from here again and see if we get snagged just continue on up this way the wind is starting to pick up a little bit we could drift very slowly with it we could drift back down this way 
or we could keep doing what we're doing and just move up a little bit anchor ideally ideally you'd want to start at the top and make your way down anchoring if you had flow which we don't have out here today no current so it don't really matter i guess today i kind of want to drag some more you know may not be possible if there's wood debris around all of this be but here's the thing though if we drag and we start getting snagged we can mark all them places and then i can come back to them on tournament day if i fish here Let's do that. Let's get on the move. I think, well, hold on. We're gonna hold on a second because we got a fish right here. Okay, he just turned. I thought he was gonna come up there to our bait. Yeah, what do you think? You think that's a good idea? Let's drag. If we get snagged, we come across some some more cover some more wood down there we'll mark it put a gps waypoint on my graph and if i do end up here on tournament day all them places we got snagged at today i'll just come back and hit them that'll be where i anchor at. that's hell that's genius i can't believe i didn't think of that sooner okay sometimes y'all moments of brilliance happen at the Opp most opportune times you just never know when that flash of brilliance is going to hit you i had some blueberries this morning that's probably why i thought of that i had a handful of blueberries before i left the house and, and blueberries are supposed to make you smarter they're supposed to make you smarter and help you think better i don't know the science behind that but i heard that somewhere I heard it on the internet it must be true ain't no lies on the internet okay so here's here's what I want to do to our dragging rod here we're gonna reconfigure this rod holder so we can suspend one off the back as we make our way along. We're gonna suspend a head bait back there. This rod we will put up for a minute. So I want, since I'm suspending one right directly off the back, I don't wanna have two going right off the back because that'll be just begging for snags or tangles I mean if we hook one okay let's get our map card back up in place here let's get us on the move I'm gonna get our speed set and then we'll start letting out some line those out drop our suspend rig down got it set all right y'all we're on the move for better or worse we're on the move we may we may regret this if we get snagged 57 times, but at least we'll have some places marked. And we'll just continue on the same path here, working our way on this channel edge around the bend. Maybe we'll get some fish on the move. You know, and I mean, I, again, I, those fish were eating the bait set still, but would they have eaten it moving if I could have actually dragged through that stuff i don't know either way though if i fish this area on tournament day i'm going to be anchored or spot lock i may end up bringing a physical anchor we'll see 
we'll see what happens to i'm gonna hit that other place this afternoon try to hook up with ryan fish with him tomorrow so got a lot going on i don't know tomorrow i've talked about this doing this i don't know that it'll work out i'm not going to drag these baits very far behind us because if we're going to get snagged all the time i don't want 600 yards of line out boy they're already catching on stuff man look at them rod tips it gets pulling through some rough stuff right there the bottom don't even look that rough right now on the graph but just seeing how them rod tips are catching i'm coming over stuff yeah yeah we're gonna try it we'll try it here for a little while it'll either work out or it won't but um one of the things i had talked about doing and i did try it one time with daniel there from catfish sumo was on these unedited videos if i'm fishing with someone use my fancy pants microphone put one on me put one on them so I can talk to whoever I'm fishing with and you all can talk with them too or, or be a part of the conversation, you know. But when I did that with Daniel, him and I were anchor fishing and we were side by side. So like we were within close proximity to each other. So basically we could hear each other because we can put a microphone, I can put a microphone on me and whoever I'm with and y'all can hear it just fine. But here's the problem, potentially, for tomorrow. Ryan pulls planer boards all the time. That's what he does. He's one of those planer board people. And if you got somebody, if you're fishing with somebody that's pulling planer boards, you got to give some space because they got all these rods, like these planer boards, and their baits going out 50, 75 yards beside them. So you can't be very close to the person that you're fishing with if they're in a kayak pulling planter boards. So, if him and I fish together tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to be able to put him on the video. Because, if I put a microphone on him so that y'all hear our conversations, then... Y'all are going to be, your, your eardrums are going to be busted out because him and I are going to have to be so far apart for him to run his planter boards. We're going to have to be yelling at each other to be able to communicate, which means we're going to be yelling into the microphones. That's not good for you. So I don't, I don't know that it's the best idea to put a microphone on him tomorrow. So probably won't. Um, you know, I'm fish with him, obviously, so he don't make his way down here very often. So I'm gonna kick back and relax a little bit here too, y'all. I'm gonna adjust the camera. There, so hopefully y'all can see everything good. So yeah, y'all, tomorrow I don't know. Assuming him and I are able to get together and fish, I don't know that y'all are gonna hear anything from him tomorrow. And I could film him reeling in a fish or something, but and you might could hear me yelling at him, but I don't want I don't want to put the fancy pants microphones on it and us him and him him and I both be yelling at each other to be able to to hear. That's kind of the downfall of the microphones have the capability to pick up that far away, but my ears don't have the ability to pick up that far away. So we'll see. We'll see how it works out. I think the ideal scenario for putting a microphone on somebody that I was fishing with would be like if we were suspending baits, like maybe we're in a creek mouth or something and we're close proximity to each other. Fish. Fish. Oh, come on, fish. Wait, come on. Rod, rod holder. Feels pretty solid. 
this is on the head and this one is the one I'd cut the fly off of. Boy, he's strong. Man, my drag title there. Oh, we haven't moved far, y'all. We haven't moved far and we're already bit. Maybe. Oh, we'll see the quality of this thing and get him up here. You know, we caught that one dragging first thing, had that other bite, but they were, it was a smaller fish. The better quality we got while we were sitting still, but again, we couldn't drag through there. So what the hell do I know? But this is what I wanted to do with this unedited video here, y'all, is bring you with me. Just see me going through the motions here, what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing out here, and hopefully maybe you'll get some benefit from that and maybe help you somewhere down the way here, down the road. And this is a blue. He's fun, large dink, small fun size. If he's going to act like that, I'm going to call him a dink just to make him matter. Don't you throw my head bait off, fish. I'm going to keep that thing. It's still pretty good shape. Yeah, thus far, the one thing we know for sure is the quality has been better on the fish that have hit set and steel. Where's my glove at? Y'all done lost my glove. Big enough to be considered a fun sizer. Let's bring him in. I may give him a little front camera time. I'm gonna set you down a second though, fish. I wanna get this bait. I wanna start letting some line out. Let's fix our bait back here. I hear you talking down there, fish. I hear it. That fish says he ate some blueberries this morning too and he don't feel any smarter. I don't know where I heard that at. Supposedly blue or blueberries does something in your brain. It makes you more coherent or something. I don't know. You know, you, you hear this stuff on the internet. You don't know what to believe and what ain't. But I had me some blue. I like blueberries. I had me a handful of them this morning. This fish said, oh, blueberries? He thought, he thought I said bluegill. He had him some bluegill this morning, probably. Did you eat bluegill? I can't hardly catch fish on bluegill. He ain't gonna tell me now. He don't wanna tell me when he eats some bluegill. But that's a smaller, fun-sized fish there. I don't, I'd say he's probably 30, 32 inch range in there, probably, lengthwise, so. I'm going to need them bigger than you on tournament day, fish. I'm going to need me three over 40 inches. You tell me where your friends are at? You don't tell me. Yeah, that fish ain't cooperative at all. Get out of here then. That fish, he ain't cooperative for nothing. You can't trust the fish. They won't give up their friends. They're loyal to their friends, but he won't point them out. He could have easily given me some GPS locations. He ain't doing it. Well, we got a. We just went across something right there. It's gonna be a mess. I'm on. It's off the screen now. <laughs> I'm got a feeling we're gonna be snagged in whatever I just went over there. But if it does, we'll we'll put a GPS point. And we'll know. Oh, another one. Another one here. Another one here. I think our back line there is caught a tree or something. A limb. We're going to have to fix it in a minute. We got another one here on this chunk. All right, folks. Here's what we know. Here, here's the one thing I know to be fact. There are fish on this river bend right now. That I know for a fact. So I'm feeling good about that. 
see how I do later on this afternoon. We'll see how I do tomorrow. But if nothing else, I know I can probably come here on Saturday and expect to get bit. I think this one here is probably going to be a fun sizer too. I don't know how many fish we've got now. It's been a few for the short time we've been out here. This one here is bigger than the last one. I think that's a piece of grass. I thought it was a limb at first. I think it's a piece of grass we've snagged with our suspending rod. Oh, crap. Crap. Got this one snagged right here. <laughs> Whatever we went across a minute ago when I let that other one go, I said I was probably going to end up in it. Oh, daggummit. All right, let me just spot walk a second while I deal with this fish. Let's just go ahead and mark a waypoint that way I'll know to, because if I anchor on this spot to fish that snag, then right here is probably where I need to be. I saw it on the screen. I told you, I said, we're going to be hunging that in a minute. Sure as the world. This is a good one right here too. This is actually bigger than I thought he was when I first saw him. Hold on, fish. Let me get my glove on. Give me a second here, fish. I'm working as fast as I can. You impatient thing. This fish, you lucky you got your own healthcare system down there, fish. If you had to deal with humans, healthcare system, and you go to a doctor appointment, and your appointment's at noon, and the doctor don't come in to 1.15, this fish would have a conniption fit, man. He ain't got the patience for nothing. You'd never make it in a doctor's office, fish. If this fish didn't have high blood pressure when he went to the doctor, he would by the time he left. I've wondered about that, too. That's side note about that here in a minute as I hold this fish up. What do you think about that fish? I've wondered about that, though. Somebody goes in the doctor, they wait out in the lobby for an hour and a half, they pissed off by the time they get to a room and then they check their blood pressure. The blood pressure's probably gonna be up a little bit. You probably got half the country on blood pressure meds that was only got put on them because they was pissed off at the time the blood pressure was taken. This fish don't care about that, though. That fish, he's never had his blood pressure taken in his life. He don't know anything about that. Well, we got that one already reeled in. We don't need to do that to, before we go back and get our snag. That's another bite though, and we get on the move here. We're catching some fish. Look at this. Did you see that? Did a fish just hit my bait and knock it loose? Or are you kidding me? You saw that. You saw that, didn't you? I think a fish just hit my bait while it was sitting there. And I think it knocked it loose. It did. <laughs> Let's do this a second here, folks. I'm gonna cast that out. We're just gonna stay on spot lock here just a second. Let's put us another bait on this one. We'll cast it out and sit there a second. Sit here right above whatever that snag was. Something just hit that dang. Something just hit that bait and knocked me free. Boy, if they could all do that all the time, we'd never have to go back for a snag at all. What are the odds of that? I'm gonna knife that now. That's just good luck right there. We've had some good luck today. We've had some bad luck today. We've had a little bit of everything. This area, folks, I'm, I'm feeling good about it, man. A lot of fish here. I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna come here and get skunked on Saturday. I mean, you never know, but as many fish as they are here right now, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's see if we can cast this thing without making a fool of myself. 
like the last time I tried to cast this thing. Let's just sit here just a few minutes and see what's going to happen. See, right now the wind's blowing this way across the channel and it's got me turned sideways. That's going to be a, that's going to be the difficulty if we have to anchor on tournament day, but like I said, we'll make do. We'll, we'll figure out a way, somehow, some way, we'll, we'll make it work. I'm seeing, look right here. Let me hit that screen. There's a big fish, and right here, there's another one. Yeah, there's some fish right there under us. This is that's probably on close to my back bait. Let me spin this thing around. Okay. So here's my bait, and I actually need to lower that down. There's those fish. We've actually got our bait raised up too high right now. You know, let's just see. See where we're at here on the time. Let's give it 10 15 minutes here. Just see what happens. Let's see what I think I got started fishing around 8 o'clock and it's 10 46 now. I don't want to fish. Probably won't fish too much longer here regardless. I want to make my run down river and check that out too. I'm feeling like I know enough now about this spot. I mean, I guess it'd be nice to kind of mark some more timber up through here if I end up anchoring, but I feel like I know... I know enough of what's going on through here. I can make a run at it on Saturday if I come back here. But now we know there's a bunch of fish around 30 feet deep or so on this river bend. Now I kind of want to know, and those fish that we've caught have been dark too. Some of them have been real dark. Like they've been in the shallows recently. But I've said this before, and I believe it to be true 100%, is you can catch fish in the shallows some of the time, but you can catch fish deep all of the time. There's all, fish will not go shallow seven days a week, 365. Spring and the fall, they're gonna move shallow more frequently but none of the big fish is going to be in the shallows 24-7, 365. It just don't happen. They're all, all of them are going to retreat to deeper water at some point. And so you're always going to have some fish in deeper water. So that's why I have so much confidence fishing deep. Because I know I can, I, I can almost always, although the last couple weeks have tried to make a liar out of me, uh, but I almost always feel like I can find some fish and deep water. And honestly, too, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I have had some days where I have fished shallow and ain't been able to do worth a crap then either. Back home, but this is a different body of water down here, and it don't get nearly as much fishing pressure, at least catfish-wise, as Fort Loudon and Watts Bar back home. People come down here, they come down here to bass fish. There's not, not a lot of catfishing going on here. So... I want to see what's going on at that deeper ledge down there. See what's in that 70 foot hole, if anything. Maybe drag that other ledge on up back toward the back toward the car. Look, I want to try it out. 
if I do, if I do get on some fish down, what I'll here's what I'll probably do. Because we're already almost three hours into this video here. When I finish up here, I will probably end this video, I guess, whenever I finish this section here. If I get on more fish down there, I'll probably just make like an edited video. Because here's, here's another wild card in this. I've been doing all these unedited videos lately. And, you know, I mean, y'all have been watching them, and I appreciate that. And it's certainly easier on me. I would rather do an unedited video, to be honest with you, because I feel like it's real. Yeah, and I've touched on this so many times, but like when you do an edited video, it's a highlight reel, basically, of your trip. All the, all the shenanigans we went through today with me snagging my line, backlashing, going to cast and getting one hook around this line. Like, you don't see that on edited video, man. All that stuff gets cut out. These, are, these trips are real. These unedited videos, like you see it all start to finish. I can talk about whatever I want to, whatever's on my mind. Like I'm just more into these unedited videos than I am the edited ones right now. And I guess you all are too, because these are getting way more views than my edited stuff. But with that said, Daphne the dog, YouTube's favorite dog, and she better be thanking her granny today because her granny is going to my house to let her out, which is why I'm able to fish as long as I'm gonna be able to today. But uh, Daphne the dog has gotten a new bicycle recently. And she's got two more bicycles being delivered. So we have to do some fish, fish. Oh boy, look at him go, man. Oh boy, come on. Oh boy, I can't get the rod out the rod holder. Look at him go, oh crap. Oh my gosh, this is a big fish. Big fish. I can't get the rod out the rod holder, y'all. Oh my gosh, this is a big one. This is a big one, y'all. Oh man. Big fish. Big fish. Man, he was stripping line. I could not get the rod out the rod holder, y'all. My other one's hooked up. My other one's hooked up over here behind me. We're doubled. The suspended bait, not so much. The two that's cast out. This is the play, y'all. This is the play. Casting out. We got the smaller fish dragging. We set still. Now we got we got the bigger one. Right here above the snag too. Whatever that was, I saw it on the screen. I said, I'm gonna get snagged in it. Sure as enough, I did. Fish knocks it loose, thankfully. We sat here and now we now we hooked up. good fish right here man I'm excited about this one you get a takedown like that that was an awesome takedown Ryan knew I was fishing today he's gonna ask how'd you do today <laughs> Be like, I'm gonna be like, yeah, you know, I caught a few fish, just, uh, you know, <laughs> you don't want to give it all away. Do you competition, you know? Well, if I post this video though, before I'm gonna have to, man, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Big fish. I guess it's our biggest one. Biggest one of the day so far. He's all wrapped up in that line too. There he goes. We're going to tire this one out a minute. You know what I'm actually going to do, I think. I'm going to get him up here, make sure he's hooked good. And then we're going to reel in our other one over here while he tires himself out. I just want to make sure... I want to make sure he's hooked appropriately here. 
don't want any incidents like that other one there first thing this morning when I thought he was hooked deep and then he popped free. He ain't done though, buddy. That's the bruiser right here. Come up here, fish. Let me just see where you hooked at. Buddy. Oh, don't splash me like that. Hmm. Well, I'm soaking wet. I don't know if y'all are too or not. My, he got my winter tents wet and everything. I got water dripping off my glasses right now. Just let me see where you hooked that fish. Come on, I ain't asking much. Lord, you thought I'd ask this fish to donate to charity or something. This fish is treating me like I was working a drive through and ask him to round up a dollar to help the some children's charity or something. Everybody's saying no to that. This fish is saying no to me. Wanting to get a look at him to see if I can see where he's hooked. Make sure I don't need to just go ahead and land him before I reel in the other one. Okay, he's hooked right in the corner of the jaw right there. That's a good fish, man. He's got some weight to him. Look at that thing, man. Look at that right there, buddy. Nice, y'all. Nice fish. Nice fish. Okay. Let's set him back. You do your thing over there, fish. Oh, Lord Almighty, this fish has done swam up river. He swam up here behind us. This fish said he's tired of waiting to be reeled in. He'd just come to us. Man, oh man, y'all, I'm excited. I'm, unless I just tear it up on that ledge down river from here, or I really get on something tomorrow, I think I'm probably coming back here tournament day. This one here's a fun sizer, but significantly smaller than his friend over there. I think I'll probably go ahead and land you first. Land a smaller one here first. Go ahead and get him going. I wouldn't mind casting out another bait. But at the same time too, do, like, do I wanna cast out another bait or should I just move along see if i can find some more snags and stuff I, you know I, i'm very torn if i was just fishing for me today we'd set, we'd probably still be sitting down there on the other one catching fish down there but since we need oh he just popped the hook right there did you see that he just popped that hook out of his mouth and he got that fly in the side when he done it I hope your friend over there stays hooked better than you did, fish. Come here. I was gonna give you some front camera time. Now you've ruined it, cause you done got that fly on the side. This ain't a bad fish, man. It's the fun size. If you'll hold still a minute, I'll get it out. There you go. There you go. Got your belly button piercing for your efforts. All right, y'all. Y'all got water all over the lens. Y'all, he got. I've got water dripping off my eyeglasses right now. Y'all somehow managed to avoid it. Nice one right here, buddy. This thing was a bruiser. Oh man, oh man, oh man. This makes me excited, y'all. This makes me excited. Okay, fish. Oh, 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 come on. Come on now, let's bring you in. Let's bring you in. We got him landed. 
Whoa, buddy. We have got him landed, folks. This is a tank right here. Golly Whopper on my signature series, Golly Whopper Rods from Catfish Sumo, folks. There we go. Oh, man. I want you to look at this fish. Look at that, man. Golly Whopper, y'all. We got us a dang Golly Whopper. Through all the nonsense today, all the all the the snags, the backlash. <laughs> Let's hold him up. Oh, it's all worthwhile when you hook one like this, man. Oh <laughs> I love it. I need to get a better grip on him here. I need to get a better grip. He's got his bottom jaw kind of flared out a little bit here. I'm having a hard time. Okay. Oh, crap. Here comes bass. Uh, okay, he's going the other way. I don't want him seeing this. He'll be upset. This fish right here eats his precious bass. <laughs> Is that awesome or what, man? I mean, he had that rod, man, double. We couldn't get it out the dang rod holder. <laughs> this is so awesome. We're on to something right here, buddy. We're on to something. All right, fish. I didn't mean to dump him that hard. I, he's, he's so dang heavy. I was his his weight's more than my grip strength. There, <laughs> he'll be all right too. Man, y'all, we're on to something here. There's some good fish in this area, and there's good numbers of them here right now. If I was just fishing for me today, my own personal enjoyment, which let's, I mean, I'm always fishing for my own personal enjoyment. But if I wasn't really trying to educate myself today, I'd still be sitting down there where we were probably, as long as we were getting bit. But here we were, we started, we sat there at that creek mouth and we ain't getting nothing going. We start dragging. I see that snag. Next thing you know, we're snagged in it. We sat here, boom, big fish, another fun sizer. Look right here, look right here. He's on it, look right here. I saw him eat it, I saw him eat it. He's ate our suspended bait. Oh, buddy. We got another one here. We caught him in the act. We caught him in the act. Eye in the sky, I got him there on the screen. I had that transducer facing back on this suspended bait. And we just caught him. Eye in the, we ain't got a bait down there in the water right now, man. We don't have a bait in the water right now. But we've got a big fish on the line right here. <laughs> what a day, folks. Oh, I tell you what, I'm really gonna have to see something else around here to keep from not coming back here on tournament day. I gotta get the camera adjusted here. We're in bad shape. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think this one's gonna be. That was a nice takedown. That's a good fish. He ain't as big as the, the other one though. Man, oh man. <laughs> I saw him on the screen coming up. I hope I got the camera down there in time. <laughs> That's awesome. What a day, y'all. I'm telling you, I needed this too. I was talking in that ultralight video a couple days ago. I filmed it. But I've done so poorly catfishing lately. Man, the last 12 catfishing sessions I had had prior to this, I had gotten a grand total of two videos. Like, I had just done so poorly. 
that it kind of just almost breaks your confidence a little bit like when you've tried as many places as i've tried and done as many things as i've done and just nothing was working like starts to kind of mess with your mind a little bit and so to come out here today new body of water well not new not you know what i mean a body of water i don't fish all the time just a change of scenery from home and come out here and have a day like today boy it's good for the soul <laughs> i needed it here's what i want to do before we hold you up fish and we're going to you're, you're definitely front camera worthy we're gonna we're gonna get this undone and we're gonna drop our bait back down what have i done with the fly here boy the he's run the fly i think he's run the fly I don't know what the hell's happened here. Well, I was saying we was going to drop this bait back down right quick. We are going to drop it down right quick, by gosh. You know, you know what we're going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We got our other spin rig right here ready to go. We'll stick that head on this and drop it back down. That way we can at least have one bait in the water right now while we hold this fish up and get everything else sorted out. I don't even know what that fish has done. I think he's run that fly. Or I've run the fly through the dang... I don't know. We'll sort it out in a minute. Most important thing is we get another bait down there in case we got more friends coming through. All right, let me set y'all up in here again. Y'all get the front camera seat there. Uh-huh. Now let's hold us another one up there. This one here, not very heavy, but he's got some length to him. I'd say he's probably, you know, again, ain't no way of knowing for sure, but I'd say he's probably 38 to 40 inch range from looking at him here, lengthwise. I mean, again, skinny for his size, but nice, man, nice. Saw him come up to that bait Looked like he was swimming off with it, and we glanced back, and sure enough, he had. <laughs> All right, fish, get on with yourself. Oh, man, it's so awesome. I needed this day so bad, y'all. I needed it, man. Two, two successful catfishing trips in the last 12 attempts prior to today that's a piss poor percentage <laughs> especially if you're doing youtube man like you gotta typically i try to ideally would like to have that in reverse you know have, have like a eight out of ten 80 to 90 percent successful trip as far as videos go but boy it ain't been the case lately but man it is today so let's um I want to sit here but i think we need to get on the move and see what else we can find what do you do folks what do you do do you sit here and keep sticking these fish all daggone morning because i'm gonna need them again on saturday but if we get back on the move and we drag again we might find some more snags and we can just come back and hit boom 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 if need be I think that's what I want to do against my better judgment. Against my better judgment, I think that's what I want to do, folks. I think I want to get on the move. Where's my, where's my cutting board? Yeah, let's, did any of them, did we get any of those baits back? We got this head bait back. Let's take a look at it. Oops. Yeah, it looks okay. The mouth is tore up, but it looks okay. The bait itself, the meat of it, good. What about this one? 
this one we need a bait for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, today, if we were scored fish today, I would say my three biggest would probably be over 120 inches, don't you think? Between the big one and some of the other long ones. I mean, some of them other longer ones probably was somewhere near the 40 inch range. That The biggest one was definitely over 40 inches for sure. So I would say I've probably got over 120 inches thus far and you know this is a again the tournament hours will run from seven to three i didn't get started today till eight ish and we're three hours into the trip so that's pretty dang good and especially with you know most of our fish here have been on our dragging rigs that's where most of them have been so fishing two and three rods here has been pretty pretty productive both not only quality but numbers too today so let's do it let's let's just let's do it Let's get on the move against my better judgment. Let's just see what else we run into up here. I'm not going to go too terribly much further um, up through here. I think what I'm going to do is probably fish another 30 minutes or so here, maybe. Because I want to put some time in down river to. I still want to go down there. You know, don't leave fish to go find fish, but. We know we know we're on we know we're on a bite here. Now the, the question for me this afternoon and tomorrow can I find a better bite? Can I find somewhere else I would rather come on tournament day than right here? So it may be to our detriment for me to leave this area today to go check out these other places. But it's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna fish a little while longer up through here. We'll see if we snag on anything else. Mark it if we do. And um, yeah, I'm excited y'all. I can't, I can't even hardly finish a thought right now. I'm excited. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. I'm not going to run these dragon rigs very far behind me right now because we're just going to get snagged and everything if I do. Anyway, though, like I was, <laughs> I was mid story when all them fish hit. Um, I was saying if I, when I run down river here, when we finish this up and I hit that other ledge, I think what I'll probably do is if I get on some fish down there and maybe do an edited video. I've caught enough fish here. I may could turn this into an edited video along with the unedited. Here's why I need to do that though. Even though I'm really into the unedited videos right now, like as far as I'm concerned, I mean, unless I'm doing a full eight hour trip, like tournament day, for instance, I gotta edit those. I mean, I've thought about doing a filming a full eight hours and posting it but yeah, that's a lot that's hard to talk for eight straight hours i might could do it but it's hard but um and definitely nobody's going to watch that in one session you know you got to break that up over multiple days but anyway daphne the dog at home she's turning into such a good dog by the way i say that now and i'll get home and she'll chewed up the couch or something She's been really good lately. Oh, why am I looking this? I'm gonna turn you back around this way so you can see Rob for that. It's such a habit to grab that camera when I'm talking. Um, she's got these bicycles. Electric bike companies have been sending her bikes the last couple years. 
and well, here we are into spring and they're doing it again so she's got one under the carport right now i've already put together we need to film a video with she's got two more coming and you would think these bicycle companies i ain't i ain't telling them how to do their damn jobs you know they send these bikes out to influencers that's what they call us youtubers and they want us to put them on video and so they know what kind of videos they want them on seems to me though they would rather me throw on one of these bike segments onto an unedited video since the unedited videos are getting so many more views than my edited videos right i mean if you're sending a bike to an influencer with the hopes of putting it in front of as many people as possible in their audience well wouldn't you want it on a video that's getting the most amount of views i mean that's common sense right but nope and what they want they want it on a normal edited video so i need to film some normal edited videos so that i can throw these bike segments on to them and race daphne around the yard so that she continues to make the bicycle companies happy and keep getting us some more bikes as we're snagged here again let's see if we can come up out of this i didn't see nothing that we went over Oh my gosh, whatever the hell we're in, it's in it enough that I got to turn around and go get it. Buddy, this is, this is something right. There's so much crap, y'all. There's so much crap around this bend. I'm not even going to try to drag it anymore today. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back and get this snag. And we're just going to cast some baits out for a little while longer, see if I can catch another fish or two maybe in the line. Boy, now I've reeled in my suspended line. There it comes. Um, because, I mean, we can't make, <laughs> we can't make any progress at all through here without getting snagged. There's just so much stuff here. Like it, it's it's useless at this point to even try to. I thought we'd just come across a snag, mark it, drag for a while, come across, but, but like we're we're barely covering any water at all before the next snag. There's just so much debris here. So I think pretty much anywhere, if a miracle happens and Saturday we have some current flow, I'll start at the top and just anchor my way, just keep incrementally making my way down. There it comes. just move us over here a little bit and we'll throw back out above that other snag that we just got them big fish out of but if a miracle happens and we get some current flow i'll start at the top and just make my way down through the day if we don't have any flow and i don't think we're going to i'll probably just take two rods and to just cast them however I can with how the kayak's positioned. I'm gonna let the kayak reset here a second, try to spin us back toward the wind before I cast these out. But that's probably what I'll do. We'll definitely fish above the two snags that we've marked, but I really think we could just hit anywhere down through here, especially if we had flow, like moving our current, I mean, moving our scent downstream. That's the one thing that we're kind of missing right now for I really think just having a lights out kind of day is scent dispersion. But we're having a pretty damn good day despite it. Yeah, probably dumb of me to be having such a good day here and just going to up and leave here in a little while and go hit a different spot but this is tournament prep y'all this is uh, you, you got to have a you need a plan and a backup plan and just because we're tearing them up here don't mean we can't be on a better bite somewhere else so
about backlash that one again. Boy, I tore my rod foam trying to get it out to rod holder there. Worth it though. Yeah, y'all. Um, speaking of Catfish Sumo products, again, Friday night, you want to come hang out. Catfish Sumo headquarters. I got a post about it there on, uh, I did a short video there for YouTube yesterday. And the video description there has uh, the address and the details to the uh, Catfish Sumo location, meetup and all that. And then I posted it all over other social media too. So if you want to come to it, the address there, it's uh, 1700 Faust, F-O-U-S-T Street in Chattanooga. 6 to 8 p.m. We'll have a good time. Hang out. You can pet Daphne the dog. She'll tell you about her electric bicycles. She loves racing them things. I keep one and then we sell the others that we get. But she got one under the carport right now and we got two more coming so we need some edited videos to throw them on because you just can't there's a language barrier all these bicycles they all come from china all these companies are china so there's a language barrier and when they reach out to you they've got they've got a list of things that they got to have you agree to basically and i've i've dealt with so many of these companies now that I answer all of their questions. I've got like a a thing on my phone and my notes thing, my notes app. I've wrote out a generic response. So when I get contacted by a bicycle company, I copy and paste my note thing over to the email to respond to. And what that what's in my my notes thing there that I've copied and pasted and this email response it answers every question that I'm ultimately going to get asked because I've dealt with so many of these bike companies now. I know what they want before they ever reach out. So I just go ahead and tell them exactly what they want to hear so that they don't have to message me 57 times. And it saves a lot of time doing that. And I also tell them what I'm not going to do because some companies, I've had to turn down several bikes because they want too much from you. They're, they're just, they want you to give up your rights uh, to the video and they want to be able to take the video and re-edit it or they want to have uh, permission to request a redo or, or reshoots of the video segment there. And I ain't, I ain't doing none of that, man. You want, if they want the rights to my video, they can pay extra for it. If I'm not, and I'm not going to let them tell me that I got to re-edit something or reshoot something, because I mean, ultimately, I'm filming fishing videos, and I ain't going to let some bicycle company tell me how I'm going to edit a fishing video. Same way, I wouldn't tell them how to edit a bicycle video if they were doing just a bicycle video, because what do I know? It ain't my lane. I stay in my lane. But me having a fishing channel in the outdoor space, if you will. A lot of the people in their bicycle demographic in the outdoor space so they like putting these bicycles on fishing channels because it gets their product in front of people that may potentially buy it but for whatever reason they don't want it on a live stream and they don't want it on an unedited video they it's yeah so gotta do some more edited videos y'all <laughs> but at least i guess it motivates me because a big portion of my audience does like the edited versions of the videos and they don't like the unedited i get a lot of complaints with these that they're too long boring yada 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 but even though it's different audiences i guess it's these uh, we were getting hit right there these unedited videos have been more popular lately get more views than the edit and i in my personal enjoyment i enjoy making these more and so if i'm happier and more people out there that are watching them are happier then that's what i need to focus on but not for bicycle companies so if i do get on some more fish down here today it's probably going to be an edited video 
here's boy here's a possible scenario for you i'm doing now i'm doing we've talked fishing strategy all morning now we're talking potential youtube competition strategy what if, if i'm able to get on some more fish down here but maybe not the quality that's up here i could flip flop everything i like doing is in sequential order but I may could put the second half of today, if I do well, post that video, then post today that you're seeing right now afterwards, and that might, if nothing else, this video might come out like a day or so before the tournament. So there wouldn't be as much time for the other competitors to see what I've had success with here this morning. That might be a potential, you might be seeing If you're the type of person who is set to this point in this video, thank you, first off, you're awesome. But if you are, then you're probably the type of person who's watching my other videos too. So you may have possibly seen, if you see a catfish video before this one, the last video I posted, the sequential order was my ultralight trip. So if you see an edited video before this, you'll know what I've done for strategy purposes. And then this video would probably come out on like Friday or something before the tournament. Man, that would be perfect if that happened. Maybe I could do that tomorrow even. If I have a day tomorrow where maybe I fish with Ryan tomorrow. Maybe I, maybe I do an edited video with him. That would allow me to maybe feature him a little more. Because he's trying to do YouTube for a living now. He, he's doing some construction jobs on the side but he's wanting to make a run at it as far as doing youtube and stuff so probably be good for me to i'd help his cause if i promoted him a little bit but it's just fish we got one on yeah. oh no oh, he pulled on it it's just tough to do like i was describing there on an unedited video when we're so far apart one after that here's the thing right now man the the wind is blowing across the channel so i'm literally sideways here with the river so we've got this rod cast out basically perpendicular here to the rod holder this one over here the line's pretty much running under the kayak this is going to be the challenge on tournament day with no flow is getting your baits where you want them to be and keep your kayak positioned. I don't like running a two anchor system. I don't think it's safe in a kayak. Now, with no flow, it's not. He's still, he's still hitting that bait. It's not as unsafe as it would be, say, in a river situation where you've got faster flow, but still. If you got two anchors down on a kayak and a big houseboat comes by and puts off a massive wake, like you can get in trouble real quick. But that would be the only way to make sure that the kayak stays where I want it to stay or pull up on the bank and cast out. But if you look at the bank over here, and this is ultimately why last year I chose that other spot down there that I showed you. There's nowhere over here that I could pull up on the shore. That other area, that other island over there had a little grassy area that I was able to pull up on. But even then, that only allows me, this fish just keeps after that bait, that only allows me to fish that one little area. I want to hit all this through here. I'd ideally like to just anchor down, throw out about three rods fan cast them left middle right and just incrementally work my way all the way around this bend that's what i'd really like to do but we're just gonna have to make it work we'll figure out something we'll figure it out or who knows I may tear them up this afternoon. I may tear them up tomorrow. I may not even come here on tournament day. I 
we'll see. It's going to be tough to top, to top what we've done here in this three hour stretch this morning though. Especially considering how inefficient I've been and just with the snags and everything like I've not fished very clean today. Like I've, I've made some mistakes out here. If I can clean those up for tournament day and have a better personal performance, we've got a lot of potential here. Another bass boat. Here goes some other kind of, I don't even know what kind of boat that is. Saltwater boat, I guess. Bay boat. Where am I at on battery life here? I'm, well, I'm close to running out of battery here, y'all. My battery pack's dead. Got 15%. I'm trying to film these videos, these unedited videos, in 4K now. That's my next goal. Now that I've got fancy pants fiber optic internet at my house, I'm trying to... Is the kayak moving or have I got a fish on there? Oh, the kayak's moving. But now that I got fiber optic internet, I'm hoping to be able to upload larger files that I couldn't do before. So you film in 4K though, you run your batteries down a little quicker. So I've bled through my battery pack. Now I'm on the internal camera battery. We're getting close to, that'll be what we do. When we run out of battery here in a couple minutes, we'll wrap this up. Very stupidly, I'm sure I will reel up and run down river, switch out some camera battery stuff. Let's see what's going on there. I'm leaving biting fish to go find more fish. Stupid, very stupid. But we on a road trip. We gotta figure out as much as we can today. I wanna, I wanna cover the launch site I used. I wanna hit the areas that I can because you're limited on your range in a kayak. Like you can only go so far. You can't, these bass boats run 80 miles an hour. We can't do that. So wherever you launch at, you're pretty much confined to a radius there of generally I, I fish as close as i possibly can to the launch but i definitely don't want to go more than a mile maybe two if it's a really prime looking location away so i want to i want to hit this area first i want to check out the other place down there so kind of fish the two places that look best on the map in the closest proximity to that launch i wanted to hit them here today I'll try to get with Ryan this afternoon, get a plan with him where we might fish at tomorrow. And then I was worried, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to come back down here anymore this week to pre-fish. I thought, man, this is because the last I'd wanted to come down here before, but the weather, the wind, rain, life stuff, you know, I just haven't been able to make it down here because I have to justify, you know, like today, it's a little over an hour each way for me to get down here. Well, that's a long drive. And, you know, I can't be gone too long because I got Daphne, I gotta be able to let out of the house and stuff. So I kind of have to plan my trips uh, when I can have my parents come over and let her out or something, or, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. So I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to come back no more. I was only gonna get two days of pre-fishing in for a turn. But after what I've seen here this morning, I'm like, we know, we know I can catch fish here. So that's good at least. Re regardless of how the after to next session here works out or tomorrow, like I'm good. We just got to focus on Friday, make sure I get some bait. Uh, definitely want to try to get some suckers. I will probably on tournament day bring some frozen suckers with me because I've got some in the freezer. In addition to the skipjack I'm going to catch on Friday. And um, we'll be ready to go for Saturday, man been a good day out here though y'all despite all the shenanigans the snags and the backlashes and the dink there is just messing up that bait despite it all we've had a a very productive trip numbers and size out here today that fish wants it man has he got it this time You better get it soon. We're at 10% on the battery. Let me just... He's got it. He does have it. 
boy, this is perfect right here, y'all. If we could end with a fish. So we'll end here with the fish. We'll give these fish here a break, let them rest up, recuperate. Forget about me hurting their feelings the next few days. And go down there, check out their friends down river, if they've got some friends down river. Let's, oh, listen here. He's thrown the bait off and got the stinger in the side of the face. Come here, fish. You gonna be the last one on the video. It's a prestigious honor. Not every fish can be last. Unfortunately for you, probably ain't very many people left watching. I doubt anybody's seen that biggest one I got. Because I doubt anybody was left watching it either. Look over hollering at me. You have that thing thing back, fish. Goodness, okay, there he comes. There he comes. I guess this bass boat here just gonna cut right over right in front of us. Let's turn him around this way so bass boater don't see him. Get out of here, fish. There he goes. Well, let's get a little closer, Leroy. Good thing I didn't have lines cast over that way. He wasn't even going to wave at me, acknowledge me or anything. Another one of these bass fishermen that owns this place. I tell you, man, the bass fishermen down here, y'all, again, they think they own this water. This is a trophy bass lake, reservoir. And if you ain't bass fishing down here, you're trash to them. They all got a bad attitude. Even that, that first one this morning come right up on me running down river. But anyway, I don't care about them. Hell with them bass fishing. We've had a good day catfishing, y'all. It's been a dang good day. Numbers, size, we got a plan for the tournament. So I'm gonna run back down river here a ways. I'm gonna leave these fish here. Stupid move them up. I'm gonna leave them here. Go down there, switch out some batteries and see what I can figure out down river. So you may see a trip either before or after this video from that if I get on some. If not, well, you won't see anything. I don't post those skunk videos on here, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go look around the other day. We're gonna experiment. So anyway, thanks for coming with me on this trip, y'all. Been been a fun day. You've seen me make a fool of myself, but we caught some fish. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.